Welcome to That's BS. I'm Jordan. I'm Adam. And today we are graced by the presence of Kyle from the Non Sequitur Show. Graced. Uh, what a what an accurate way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thought I'd bring in the religious tones. Um, uh, Kyle, how are you? And uh, why don't you open up by telling us, uh, well, telling the audience uh, about your show and where they can find you and everything like that. Sure. Um, I'm Kyle Curtis. I am the uh, host and creator of the Non Sequitur Show, which is a um, a show that features debates, discussions, and dumpster fires. If you haven't been familiar with our show, I encourage you can, to continue not to be because it uh, <laughs> it should be uh, under a medical advisement. Uh, sometimes it raises people's blood pressure and um, just can cause you to hallucinate, uh, it, which is true. It is true. I, I, I sat last night watching the show that we had going on. It went for three hours and um, it was just so bizarre that I questioned like where I was in reality. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if you don't know about it yet, you're lucky and stay that way. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the most recent episode that I listened to of yours was um, uh, a few back. It was about uh, whether or not it was kind of ethical to bring on people that you disagreed with and platform them. Oh yes. That was oh, a good yes. episode. There was a lot of dissent in, in the, the people who joined oh. you on that one. There's a lot of dissent uh, and, and, it, and it's, it, it's been quite the uh, controversy. It sparked a larger um, discussion, which I think is is necessary. But the the interesting thing is uh, the the way that I sort of became more, uh, I guess, sought after in terms of the attacks or whatever than the person that they were protesting against me having on. It was an interesting dynamic. I so I slowly became worse than 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 that guy. I'm just a person that believes that um, you know. There are ideas and there are people who have ideas that make you uncomfortable. And there's two ways you can address that. You can ignore those ideas and they won't go away if you do. Or you can try to battle those bad ideas with good ideas and hope that there is someone out there who has been you know, under the guise of this bad idea that sees the point that you're trying to make. And in that way, you can sort of um, invoke a change, but ignoring it doesn't do anything to solve the problem. Now, there's nothing wrong with either of those options. There's nothing wrong with ignoring it, and there's nothing wrong to me with having that discussion. But I'm not afraid to have that discussion. And some people, for some people, that's just, you know, they can't they can't handle that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting. Uh, we've we've sort of talked about that a little bit on our show, uh, mm -hmm. both on and off air. And I, I think the, the kind of group consensus we've come to is if you're going to have someone on whose ideas you think are legitimately dangerous, then it's sort of your responsibility to um, to push back on them in real time. And that's sort mm -hmm. of like a, a personal stance that we have. Um, but I, that's sort of where we've settled on it. Absolutely. I, and I think that's a um, – like you have to be able to – uh, see, the, the misconception is that people uh, started painting things as that, you know, me and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give an example. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, um, you know, you shouldn't platform Nazis. Um, and when you do platform them and you go after those ideas, which is what we did. Um, he wasn't an actual Nazi, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, they then say, act like you just had on a Nazi and we're chumming it up. You know, yeah, like, had a like, cup of tea with a Nazi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the Third Reich. What's going on in the Third Reich this year? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't that way. It was somebody actively in defiance of their ideas. And so to me, that pretty distinctly says, I don't agree with this guy. I'm trying yeah. to show him where he's wrong. And to me, there's never harm in that. Never harm in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so it, someone's line, maybe Sam Harris's or something that, or maybe Douglas Murray's actually, that good ideas will tend to beat bad ones if they're brought into fresh light because good ideas just have more to stand on. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, some line like that. I, I can't remember who said that. Um, but yeah, so so we wanted to kind of open up the religious talk, though, with um, a, a discussion of your background, because it sounds like it might have been similar in a lot of ways to uh, Adam and mine. Sure. Um, I uh, and I'm Steve is uh, Steve said he'll be in in just a few. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, so Steve will join us. Um, yes, I grew up as a uh, as a young earth. Um, creationist until uh, I was about 25. I was a Southern Baptist. And uh, if uh, for 
for the first part, then we became independent Baptists. And if you don't know what an independent Baptist is, that's the answer to the question, um, what is more far right to a Southern Baptist? So uh, <laughs> if, if, if Southern Baptists aren't conservative enough for you, then you want to go independent. Uh, okay, Baptist. great, great. Yeah, sign yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, so I grew up uh, as a young earth creationist. Um, also, a little caveat, I am also a gay man. Hmm. So here oh, we'll have to ask you to leave the show then. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> just, just oh, uh, okay. I can do it. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's you you grow up listening to how you are an abomination or you know, you are less than because of just you're attracted to uh, uh you know, somebody of the same sex. And I hate to tell everybody this, but it is not a choice because uh, if it was, I would have chosen at that time to not be gay. Um, it just wasn't working. And uh, eventually I was at a youth night one night. Uh, we were leaving and one, uh, one of my friends was watching a uh, an R and Raw video. He was on the atheist experience actually. And he was laughing and I was like, what's well, so funny? And he's like, this guy saying that there's slavery in the Bible. And I remember going, well, how can he lie like that? There's no slavery in the Bible. And I went home and pulled up that R and raw episode and was watching it, went to the Bible verse he was throwing out there and son of a bitch, there was slavery in the Bible. Yeah. And, um, you know, you don't, but it makes sense. You don't hear about this stuff on Sunday, you know, in the, in the, mm -hmm. pulpit. they're not going to get up there and, and preach about how, um, that, so that video led me to watching more R and raw videos. And the more I watched and the more I went and verified these things in the, in the, uh, the Bible, the more I was just totally appalled and uh, it just didn't make sense that if there was a God, he definitely isn't Christian, mm. definitely is not uh, the Christian God. And so I, uh, I had to come out of a, a second closet, the atheist closet. Huh. That's, that's a really interesting backstory. Um, so was it, so I'm curious, was it uh, the sort of abhorrent moral things that you found in the Bible that was the main thing that drove you away, or was it something else? It was the, uh, it was the, the complete, um, I felt lied to about, it's almost like this. Let's say you had a, let's say you were dating someone, right? You meet somebody online, um, you go out for a bunch of dates, and they're just the most wonderful person. They talk about all of these, like these charity things that they do, how much they love their family. Everything's just amazing. And so for a couple of years, you guys are dating and it couldn't be any better. All you see is the, um, them doing charitable work, blah, 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 blah. Well, then you, you move in together and that person starts hitting you out of nowhere, just hitting you and then telling you how much he loves you. That's how I felt because um, I, for the longest time, I had been getting this one side of the Bible. This, uh, this, oh, God loves us. God doesn't want any, any harm to become of us, uh, because that's what you're, you're fed. That's what you're spoon fed in church. But the moment that um, I watched that Arn video, I saw the the dark side of the uh, the Bible. And no matter how wonderful that significant other has been to you those two years, the moment that they strike you, you for you know all of that's null and void because you see this this dark side and uh spending eternity with that person that is just so quick to uh to beat you while telling you that they love you i just couldn't be okay with huh so what i'm curious what kept you uh in kind of the grasps of religion until 25 um because adam and i it sounds like we had a pretty similar upbringing um I, evangelical and baptist upbringing and but both of both of us um, kind of really seriously began to doubt <clears throat> around the age of you know somewhere between fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Adam, mm -hmm. does that sound right to you? Yeah, it sounds pretty right. I mean, I yeah. think I think we were you know pretty we were looking <laughs> through the Bible, finding ridiculous passages probably at the age of fourteen. You yeah, I mean? like I mean, how how, you know, how how could this be written by you know an omniscient being, you know, when it's just the the most ridiculous passages? But I probably at the age of fourteen. Mm -hmm. sure. so, I'm yeah. curious what, what kept you uh, in religion for so long. Um, I, uh, well, up, up until like uh, I saw that video, I genuinely believed it. Um, I, my family was a 
such that they were all super, super religious. Um, still are. And I thought the, with the gay thing, I thought that was me. I thought that was something that I needed to work, work on I, so much so that I actually dated somebody for three years, uh, a girl, and we were engaged. Um, I was so close to getting married. Um, and I would lay in bed at night begging for, you know, God to not make me feel that way anymore. You know, I didn't want to be gay anymore. And so I literally tried everything, um, because I thought it was a me issue. But when I saw this other side, when I saw these other, these, these contradictions, this, uh, this evilness and this, um, just how really religion has been used over the, the, the past several thousand years to control people, to discriminate against people, to um, impose a will on people, it, the floodgates opened and it all just kind of hit me at once. But up until that point, I, uh, I genuinely thought that this was, this was how it was, you know, the, God was obviously real and only people who just want to sin and who have no moral compass, um, you know, that was the way it was. Wow. So it sounds like it was a, it was a pretty immediate kind of switch for you or yeah. Do you, okay. yeah. It was, uh, it took, it took about a week. Um, I, I, I binge watched those, those videos for about a week. And um, after I, and you know, like I said, I was checking verses and stuff as he was going along and, um, I, at the end of it, could not honestly say that uh, two things. I couldn't honestly say that um, the, the the God was real anymore because of what was the, what this book said and the apparent contradictions. And number two, even if he was knowing this other side, I could not be okay with worshiping a deity for eternity that was okay doing that sort of thing. And ultimately, I, here's what it came down to to me. This was the final thing that put the nail in the coffin. In the Garden of Eden, right, you have a tree that caused all of the world's suffering because she ate the fruit, right? Mm -hmm. The earth, I'm assuming, uh, the earth didn't change, right? The earth's the same size now as it was back then. So of all of the geographical locations that God could have placed that tree, knowing what would happen, he puts it in the garden with the, with the only two people on the entire planet. Yeah. The only two. He puts it there. The middle Why of not, the garden, too. Right. Yeah. Why not put it on the other side of the planet where they could never get to it? And yeah. uh, and the other thing is, you made that tree with the power to do that. Like, mm -hmm. And when it happened, why not just say, oh, you ate of the tree? Well, I told you not to. I'm disappointed, um, but I don't feel like going through 3,000 years of just famine, disease, um, murder, rapes, uh, abuse, all of this this turmoil. I don't feel like creating a, a a a bodily version of myself and then sacrificing myself on a cross to myself to pay for this. So why don't we just say it's it's uh you know don't just don't do it again. I'm gonna uproot the tree. I'm gonna move it to uh, where the United States is. You don't need to know about that. Yeah. And we'll call it even. But he didn't do that. Hmm. Yeah, the I mean the absurdity of it all it was definitely one of the first movers for for me and Adam. I, I know that. I mean I just like thinking about uh, one one of the things for me was just thinking about like the kind of redundancy of human beings in the first place because it was like, you know, God made these perfect beings, the angels to worship him day and night. But then for some reason, he kind of grew tired of his own creation and then dabbled in the playground of the earth to make these far less, uh, you know, perfect beings and who, you know, could defy him, could not. And he chooses to kind of meddle in their affairs or not. And it just, mm -hmm. it seems so absurd to me and so unnecessary. Speaking of, uh, of, of, um, what was the word you used? Uh, lesser beings. Yeah. Steve, uh, absurd. Steve, welcome. I, think, I think you're searching for absurd. Absurd. Welcome, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, also uh, welcome, um, Steve. Yeah, sorry. Hey, well, nice, nice to be here. Hey, uh, so I'm an absurd lesser being. My, yeah. my, my, my this story is not as eloquent as Kyle's. I, I didn't have that moment of, epif moment of epiphany where I said, you know, I no longer believe. It was, it was over several, several, several years, and I just kind of fell away. So I don't really have that much of a transition story. Although I, you know, there was a few things, though, when, when Kyle talks about things that he didn't see in the Bible as a believer, right? Uh, I can kind of emphasize with that a little bit. When, when we did Bible studies, there seemed to be a lot of stuff they missed for some reason, mm -hmm. but yeah. they didn't really go over very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did go to Sunday school. I used to go to Sunday school before uh, class in high school. Um, I was uh, went to a Mormon church, 
Um, but there, there was one story though that does stand out. It was uh, Jephthah from the Book of Judges, where he was a general and he was um, led the Israelites against the uh, Ammonites, and he made a vow to God, saying that he would kill the first thing that ever that walks through the door if he mm. would win the battles and stuff like that. And the first thing when he got home from the battles happened to be his daughter. And I had never heard this story before. This was actually, I mean, literally sometime last year. Never heard this story before. I was like, mm -hmm. that's not in the Bible. <laughs> and what, what did he do, Steve? What did he do? <laughs> he, well, supposedly he killed her, but some some say that he didn't. But if, either way, I'm thinking to myself still, though, I'm like, that doesn't sound like a God to me. What What is that? How does that work that I'm going to make a pact with God that for some reason I'm just going to arbitrarily say, I'm going to kill the first thing that comes out of my door when I get home. <laughs> yeah. Why, why would God, why would God that? make that? Why would God make that agreement though? You know, I don't know. supposedly murders on the, the top 10 list of things that you shouldn't do to other people. So why would God say, Oh, you want to kill the first thing that walks in the door? Sure. I'll let you win the battle for that. Yeah. It, it that's doesn't not, make that's sense. insane. That's and, insanity. And, and ultimately that's just one of, you know, you know, many infinite stories in the Bible that just need constant explanation, right? Sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, like the Jephthah story. You were saying that you know th there are some apologists that come out and say, no, you know, they really sent her away, you know, to live, you know, uh, a life of chastity. Right. But in reality, but in reality, if you read the story, you know, he makes the vow, and ultimately it says he did as he vowed, right? Yeah. So yeah. did did did, did he kill her? Did he kill her or not? And so you have you know an army of apologists. Just, to just make excuses for every one of these stories. And if you step back, you begin to realize, wait a second. How, how come there are excuses all throughout the Bible? Maybe it is just as it seems. You know, maybe it's as ridiculous as it seems. So It is. I, it I is. can tell you it is. It is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous as and it, it was, seems. It wasn't like he had a stable uh, home front either. I mean, his mother was a prostitute, and he was a general, you know. And so, I mean... It wasn't it's, like he came from like noble nobility or something like that. It's just there's there, the, the ultimate the thing it boils down to is if if I'm God right and I created everybody here, I want and I and I truly want them to spend eternity with me. Like that's a that's a legitimate thing. I truly want them to spend eternity. I don't want to see them uh, burn for eternity in hell. Why do I not create? a book that is crystal clear that doesn't result in thousands of denominations um other religions like a book that says step number one x step number two x step number three x and if you don't follow these steps then you will go to hell by the way a place i also created a yeah. place that since i'm god i could turn off at any time he could he could uh, dial back that thermostat in hell any any time he wanted to and if yeah. he can't then he's not all powerful so how can you continue to believe with those questions i don't see how it's possible would, would, wouldn't you rather uh you know enjoy reading stories about you know a man named lot offering his virgin daughters to a mob I mean, isn't that oh, just yeah. more, isn't that just more compelling at the end of the day? I mean, absolutely. Why, 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 why have some sort of you know step by step guide when you can read about these you know yeah. ignorant monstrous characters? I it's mean, just your it's just your eternity. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But, it's, it's, if, if 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 all of it's true though, let's say all of it is one hundred percent true. Okay, is that really a guy that you want to spend forever bowing to and praising? Not well, me. Well, don't He's a monster. Don't, that's true. don't forget in Genesis, Lot's daughters, both of them got supposedly got him drunk and took advantage of him one night to get impregnated. <laughs> oh, great! No, yeah. I, I'd much rather hear about the incest. That's that's yeah. better <laughs> than a classic pastime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens all the time, right? I mean, that's just a yeah, frequent yeah. occurrence. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to become a father. <laughs> it's gonna be it's, wonderful. And, and, and it's honestly that that continuous trope throughout the Bible of just uh, sort of. Uh, evil women that are just you know attempting to seduce and destroy men right i mean you see like i mean I, apparently lot was the only pure man you know it, i i forget if he was in you know either sodom and gomorrah i, I forget which town exactly but yeah. you know it, but he, he was the only pure man so of course his daughters raped this old man like you know yeah. are, are, you, are you serious like Oh yeah, that's that's probably what happened. They paint no. sex as such a bad thing, but if it's so, if it's really so bad, why did God make it feel so good? <laughs> to <be laughs> to tempt you, of course. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. So okay, that good. I'm glad that I'm glad that you, you you said that answer because that means who is the biggest trickster in this story? Hmm. 
Yeah, at least Satan's straightforward. He tells right. you what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, there are some narratives that, that Satan, the, the Satan, you know, isn't some evil being. It's just the uh, basically like a prosecuting attorney and that he's actually the most truthful one because he's, he's telling it the way it is. This is some narrative, you know, that some Satanist type use too. But uh, but he doesn't lie. And that's like the, the, the greatest way to deceive is to sometimes tell the truth. Um, it's true. It, he, he, his, his character pretty much became more solidified in uh you know revelation right because like i mean i in the in the old testament he acts you know as as the tempter with you know job and mm -hmm. and even in the new testament with jesus but in uh at, at the end of the new testament his character is really solidified as this demon like character and that's the only one they seem to see him as so it, it, is it is it rational and and is it rational to think that because you were made fun of for having a bald head and you asked God to help you out with, oh, with that, you, you, you went uh, cry like a cry baby to God and said, these kids were making fun of me for having a bald head. Is it rational that God would then say, you're right. That should never happen. And send a herd of bears to the tear, bears, yeah. Yeah, to tear <laughs> these people apart just for making fun of your bald head. Is that but, somebody that you want to, Praise for eternity? No. My, my, my favorite apologetic for that is, quote, um, they weren't kids. They were teens. Like, that makes it any better. <laughs> oh, cut, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I've seen those videos, too, where they're like, you know, you know, there were some unruly teens that seemed to be, you know, verbally accosting him. And I'm like, okay, where are you getting this from the passage? Like, are, are you, it seems like you're, you know, you're adding this and you're just ashamed of the story. You're, Do you know what I'm saying there for? You know what, what? I for? the Catholic Church will, will, says that uh, Bill Donahue, the uh, the the director of the, the Catholic League, said that very same thing. Steve, did he not about these yeah, these Bill sexual Donahue. assaults? He said, he, he, "Well, he, they're he, they're talking like it's child rape. These yep. kids were adolescent. Yep. Like that's a is. that's appalling." Yep. Yes. You, he was trying to negate the, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the whole thing of oh, it wasn't really child molestation. It was more adolescent molestation. Like that makes it okay. Yeah. I've, 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 I've heard a, uh, a similar argument on the atheist experience, and it, they were kind of diving down the uh, you know inevitable, inevitable rabbit hole that if God is omnipresent, he is there watching children being raped. You know, oh. he, 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 is, he is there in the moment watching oh. and observing children being raped. And the, uh, the caller kind of responded, was like, well, you act as that little kid's innocent. And they're like, oh, I remember that. Now. I've, like, I've, I've like, seen that are, well. yeah. yeah, like, like, are you serious? Like, like that—that's your best I've, response. I've, I've that heard point? that apologetic before, but but here's the con here's a contradiction that I find though. If God is everywhere, right, omniscient and all knowing, and it happens to be omnipresent everywhere, but how at the same time he's out of time? Because what a lot do you of mean by that. Well, a lot of narrative, for example, there's a position called theistic personalism, which is okay. similar to classical theism, is where God acts as this great d demure of the universe, that he basically sustains the universe from some outside perspective, kind mm -hmm. of looking in, right? Instead okay. of being one with the universe where he's pervasive everywhere, he's kind of outside space-time looking in, so he could, time is not a concept to him, right? Okay. Which, I'm not quite sure how that works, but yeah. let's go with it. <laughs> but at the same time, he's omnipresent in the universe, but at the same time, he's outside time. That actually is a contradiction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's uh, there's another kind of variant of that objection, which is like, um, how could there be, you know, because the <clears throat> we're sort of talking about like how how could God punish us for uh, things that like He set up for us to do, and and a lot of objections will be like, well, God gave us free will, um, so it's a choice whether or not we you know we choose to follow Him. But mm. what I've never understood about that is that. If God is om omnipotent, so he can do anything, and he's omniscient, so he's everywhere, and he exists across all times, like he's seen what's going to happen already, well then, he, he by definition, by your own definitions that you've given him, he has the power to create any circumstances over the duration of your entire life that he wants. Absolutely. So he, yeah, he created the circumstances of your birth the course of your life and your death. So he knows already before you're created what you'll do. So I, I don't know how free will can blossom out of that. Think about, the, think about another thing though. Is it really free will if he's allowing you to have it? Like uh, sort, it, sort of, yes. Is well, it really free it, will? It, it, is, it is. Well, it, it is free will. That's Free will is, happen, is be able to decide without undue influence. But we well, don't have libertarian free process. will. But, yeah. but here's, here's, here's the funniest thing is that I, I, apologetics will run something called molinism. 
uh, SJ Thompson is very famous for running modalism. Although she, no offense to SJ, I love her to death. She doesn't understand modalism. She just, she throws it out there as like a defense of something, right? Well, mm -hmm. because modalism. Well, what's modalism? Oh, I don't know. But it sounds good. But basically, it's an intermediate position that William Wayne Craig argues that God, he he knows everything, but he limits himself such that what he does is he says this. Okay, I know what Kyle's going to do given two situations. If he, if he's put in situation X, he's going to do. A. If he's put in Y, he's going to do B. I want B to manifest. So what he does, God is creates a modal possible world that actualizes, that puts Kyle in the in the B Y, not A. So he does B. So Kyle still has a choice. That's so dumb. <laughs> it, it doesn't, yeah, make, it, it doesn't like resolve all. It doesn't resolve everything. Trust me. Where did me. they get that from, though? Like, like where in the book do you does that? Oh, <laughs> from? there nowhere. are so many, so many uh, people nowhere. reaching for uh answers to this stuff that has no basis in the literature they yeah. go with it because it sounds good well oh uh, okay that's that's a possibility so let's go with it and people buy it hook line and sinker because for some reason it's in us that there has to be um something to this like this none of this could happen by a a chain of uh you know unplanned events that led to where we are today this has to be something that is put in motion by a uh, a grand architect, mm -hmm. um, and it's just it, you have to you have to divorce yourself from that and look at what the book actually says. If you're going to pr profess to follow the book, read it, all of it. And if and if you read the Bible from cover to cover, nine times out of ten, I will bet you will be an atheist by the, by the time it's over. If you can yeah. come out and be a Christian, then you're just uh, <laughs> you're, you're turning a blind eye to a lot of things in that book. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, I mean, one thing that Adam and I explored uh, incessantly when we were just kind of leaving leaving the church was the fact that, I mean, it has to be less than 10% of the Bible is ever discussed in a church sermon. Right. Uh, where it's just, it, it is sort of weird that like, um, you know, you'll notice that like, they'll kind of do a, uh, at least in my church, we used to do these um, sort of projects of several sermons that were like a series of a book but it would be always a very short book in the new testament and mm -hmm. i always kind of wondered why don't we ever do that with like deuteronomy or leviticus or oh. even <laughs> other books in the new testament like yeah. what what's that one book in or one verse in second timothy uh uh a man cannot be taught anything by a woman something like that like it's oh, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's it's just like a piece of pristine wisdom from God or something like that. <laughs> here's what you here's what you have to like. If, this is what I take away from it. If you read something in the book where it's like for my for for me and my story, it was the slavery issue. If you read that and then you go to someone in the church and you tell them like or ask them like, how can this be? How can God seemingly be okay with slavery? The answer that you'll usually get is that something like this. Oh, it's not the same kind of slavery. Oh, it's uh, it's, it's it's in danger of servitude. Or you'll get this, and this is what this is what's really scary. You'll get the um, well, it was God's decision. God made us. He has the right to do that. When you're when you get in your mind that you you can in some way explain away owning a person and being able to beat them within an inch of their life as long as they don't die within three days my my brain can't do that my brain could not get past that i even as even if it is god even if he is real and those things happen i could not be okay with worshiping a deity that is okay with that so it 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 takes a lot a lot to be able to sort of you know mm -hmm. condition your mind to explain away not even your own actions, someone else's actions, uh, and and try to be okay with it. To tell yourself that okay, I can get past this because it's it's God. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I, that takes a lot. I I think I think the it becomes very easy to do that because I'm under the impression that most people actually don't believe in the God of the Bible. They believe in the God of the 21st century, which has been a sort of modified and uh, distilled God that is all loving, sure. all wise, all powerful, you know, just this, you know, th this, this fear of perfection, right? But, sure. but, that, but that actually isn't the God of the Bible. 
So like you were just saying, so if you go into the Bible and you begin to sort of juxtapose this God you've been fed with the God that is found in the Bible, you know, you you can very easily, I, I would say if you if you've drank the Kool-Aid, you can easily rationalize and say, well, ultimately the God I believe in wouldn't do the things, you know, portrayed in the Bible. Or if, you know, that per, that being did, then I'm sure there was, you know, some wiser and more benevolent reason given the God that <laughs> I, I believe that in, right? But, but, yeah. it's, but, it's not, but it's not the God of the Bible. You know what I mean? Like, do you, do you understand right. where I'm coming from there? Yeah. Don't, mm -hmm. don't drink the Kool-Aid, though. Yeah. I, I know that tagline from somewhere. Yeah. That's a, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's very well said. I think that's very well said. I think. Uh, is, can I give a, a, another Bible verse that I would never mm -hmm. heard in Sunday school because I never did? It was news to me. Um, and by the way, is this a PG podcast or can I go a little? No, R? no, this is R-rated. Okay, good. Oh, you have Kyler, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Ezekiel. Rated. Okay, we're gonna go full triple. Uh, Ezekiel twenty three twenty to twenty one. Oh, I love this one. King James version. <laughs> For she dotted upon her primer paramours whose flesh is the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses uh paramours is lovers and dotted to means be to bestow a great amount of affection or love for excessive amount now what's funny is if you actually go to the um erv which is the easy to read version of the bible it's a little more explicit mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how it translates i don't know if you've ever seen the erv version but it translates this she remembered her lover excuse me she remembered her lover with the penis of a donkey and the flood of semen like a horse <laughs> as all good wow. easiest read for kids right that's the wow. easy to read vision version for for you know for the kids to say oh i don't understand the passage in the wait bible oh it's because it's talking about a penis of a donkey and the blood of a semen like a horse wait a minute i didn't know this i didn't even yes. know this. wait really oh this, this is not real it's a yeah. class. yes this is ezekiel 23 20. what the fuck <laughs> it's my favorite bible verse i i so i didn't do i didn't know either this was news well i mean i i i don't it was like last year i found that out so it was i never knew growing up though hell no well i mean uh, uh hey guy that she's uh she's dreaming about that's, that's yeah, yeah. good job to her right <laughs> i mean but can, can't you uh just sort of you know hear the divinity just you know just flow from those words right there i mean i mean, I, I mean just just true omniscience i mean it, it's to that to it's that not, point. Something, not something i could have come up with certainly not i mean to, to that point though uh can you imagine like okay these books were were inspired by by god right god spoke to these people and told um the uh the people writing them to it can you imagine the look on the guy's face when he's like what was that last part no, <laughs> yeah, to, uh, i didn't quite get that the, the, uh, plus, the key days were so was it, it, we had somebody on our show uh, it was a uh, dr um uh, uh josh bowen uh and the language that they use is so flowery right and he goes into detail of the, the king days version and who else went into that there was somebody else that went into the same jerry thing griffith. jerry griffith went into it as well well they, i think they both have kind of delved into it but but yeah, it's like it's like the King James version makes it sound so great, right? So, wow, that's that she dotteth her paramours. Oh, that's just it's, that's flowery. It's, it's horseshit, everybody. It's horseshit. It, it's horse cum, actually. It's, it's, yeah, I think you got the wrong slide. It comes out the front. The book is horseshit. <laughs> I've, I've yeah, actually, I, yeah, I've actually yeah. seen a a general trend with um sort of taming the Bible in that sense. It's kind of a dangerous one. I, I see. I hear myself echoing. Am I? Yeah, check if your headphones are correctly plugged in, Adam. Uh, you might be doing like audio through your laptop speakers. How's that? Is that better? Oh, yeah, it's better. That's better. All right. So, uh, yeah. So what I was saying was like what I've seen is sort of a uh, a, a general dangerous trend with uh, newer Bibles that have been created and translated. I'm echoing again. Shit. Yeah. Is, I can is, hear that, that. is that for me? Uh, no, it just I, started. It's not usually think, Adam <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try that. Let's try that again. That's okay, Adam. My bad. <laughs> Performance anxiety happens to us all. <laughs> this happens. At, this happens every every night on, on our show every <laughs> night. Um. Well, okay. Well, Adam is fixing that. I I yeah. wanted to backtrack for a second and get you two to respond on um. So so about the uh. Oh, I can hear myself now. The slavery in the Bible. Um one one sort of like i've heard a defense of that where god revealed uh these kind of moral truths in stages of progressions right where it was too radical to introduce full no 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 you know full stop no slavery to, in general so he so he eased the israelites into it where he started with 
Uh, you may not keep males as slaves for more than seven years, but women you can keep indefinitely. Then women were granted the seven year status as men. Then both were eventually uh, required to be freed. Oh. Then it was no Israelites, but other people. Then it was only other people of like a certain you know race or whatever. And so it was this sort of progressive, I'm doing air quotes for our audio listeners, <laughs> progressive, you know, iterative, thing of morality i i've never bought that for a second bullshit bullshit here's why he is uh he in several verses instructs people that they can't wear garments that are made of uh of different materials he tells them they shouldn't eat shrimp uh he 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 lays out uh ten commandments where they are uh they're all about the, the top three are about uh, worshiping uh, other gods, they're uh, uh, don't covet your neighbors. Like he lays out all of these detailed, specific rules, mm. and the most important one, like above uh, shrimp and above <laughs> mixed clothes, he couldn't say don't own people, don't uh, don't treat other people as property. That's yeah. insane to put that in uh, as a uh, as an excuse. That's yeah. absolutely insane. I, w- I was reading a paper just yesterday, matter of fact, and I brought it to Dr. Alex Malpass's attention. I was having a conversation with him. He's a, he's a well-known philosopher in our group. And I, we were talking about what was called the moral epistemological argument for atheism. Hmm. And, and I'm going to give the details of the argument per se. But it basically, the, the counter apologist, because he had asked me, uh, Alex had asked me, how would you um, counter this? You know, if an apologist says something along these lines, because he likes to challenge me because, he, you know, he's an ass like that. <laughs> Uh, but no, I love Alex. He's a great guy. And uh, he, the, the, the thing was that the apologist would say something along the lines of God is, was trying to bestow a higher epistemic standard to people by explaining to them morality incrementally or in more specifically that just to stop because we, in order to know good, we have to know evil. So in order we have to know moral immorality to know morality. Mm-hmm. And so God would allow for this immoral type things. God would allow for these so-called um, sins or transgressions. Because it was teaching people how to have a higher moral ethical standard. I don't buy into that. Bullshit. Um, but that is that is that is one of the apologetic narratives against the moral epistemological argument. He didn't have yeah. to have it in the first place. He didn't have yeah. to have uh, these sinful things in the first place. Like, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. He can uh, uh, wish that away or will that away in in a finger snap, and there we can go back to perfection. But he doesn't do that. I, I would I would argue efficiency in that. What I would say would be, and you're right, but I, the way I would word it, I would be like, um, th- if God's trying to teach us a lessons of like a certain kind, the way He went about it seems very very inefficient for an all powerful, all knowing being. It's hypocritical and uh, and and pretty damn evil. Evil would be the word I would use. Absolutely evil. Yeah, I mean, because he's he's condemning. I mean, forget about even the people that just don't listen. What about the people who never heard? I mean, the the millions of people in India, in Asia, in uh, South America, in North America before before the you know colonialization. What about all those people who never had the opportunity to believe? The whole I mean, something, something to they'll have it afterwards. Like there's there's the the argument from divine hiddenness is one of my favorite arguments. Um, I think it's one of the best arguments for atheists. And mm-hmm. basically, it, it argues this because I'm what's called a non-resistant non-believer. Uh, that is somebody who is not saying, "Hey, I, if there's a god, I don't want anything to do with him." It's like, "Hey, yeah, if you do exist, hey, come talk to me." Right? You're yeah, non-resistant yeah. and you're a non-believer. Mm-hmm. So. The argument is such: if God is, wants a personal, communi- you know, personal uh, relationship with somebody, right? Then why is He not reaching out, you know, and, and, and making that happen? It's it, it's it. Why is He hidden from from the non-resistant non-believer? And that would be somebody who's never heard of Him as well, right? If you never heard of Him, then you're clearly a non-resistant non-believer because you you don't know if you're rejecting or withholding assertion or um, uh, I mean, withholding assent. You don't know mm-hmm. anything about the deity, right? Can I can I answer that as a uh, yeah. as, as a as an evangelical? I go for it. <laughs> well, Steve, uh, you you see, you may think that you're 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 seeking God, but your heart's not open. You have that doubt, and as long as you have that doubt in there, He's not going to come to you. You have to be. Now, is that how you would have answered answered it? Yeah, uh, uh, oh, heart. Answer. Yeah. yeah, Kyle, open your heart. Because Kyle, Kyle was a bigger believer than I was. Kyle is, was a full-on young earth creationist, evangelical. Is that how you would have answered it, really? Uh, have you like? Oh yes, you know? yes. Okay. Uh, have you not heard this, um, uh, uh, guys in the, the in the in the podcast? Uh, either of you, Adam? Have I've you been this? told that verbatim. Oh, oh yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's often that you 
ultimately you're you're a flawed creature that really doesn't right. know God. So it's on you. You're not sincere in your in your search. Like uh, sure. once you once you let down those walls, then he will come to you. But until you fully open yourself up, it's you. It's your fault. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's pretty funny in a way actually because often it's sort of like, you know. You try to like reason from a from a rational standpoint, and you you know talk about you know what what credible and compelling evidence is there for you know to, you know to believe in this being, and someone's like, well you know ultimately you kind of have to make that leap of faith. You kind of have to believe, and I'm like, so you gotta believe before you can start believing. You gotta kind of like you know you get right. what I'm saying there. You get it. It's yeah. like yeah. Kierkegaard yeah. calls that the leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. That, that really what, yeah. what Kierkegaard meant by that per se. I think they were kind of taking what Kierkegaard said a little bit. Um, he didn't really mean that you have to believe in order to believe. It wasn't like, hey, jump off this cliff and hope cl cliff and hope that God reaches down and saves you kind of thing. It wasn't he that kind of real faith? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it basically, he clicker guard was trying to say, hey, you know what? Stop thinking about yourself. Stop having this introspection and maybe open yourself up to to you know higher consciousness of some kind. He didn't word it that way. It was kind of a Deepak Chopra, but <laughs> as as if we as if we needed another reason uh, for. To, to question belief here's like this is the number two reason why i stopped believing mm -hmm. you're told all your life or at least i was in, in church that um it doesn't matter when in life doesn't matter at what point at what age if you choose to believe in god no matter what you've done you will spend eternity in heaven now here's the question i'm saying i'm god right I have two people in front of me that have that have just recently died. You have this guy who uh, murdered two people, uh, sexually assaulted kids. And they found him out. They put him to death. Right. He's in front of me. But right before while he was locked up, right before he died, he gave his life to God. And then I have this other guy who spent his entire life, um, very average life, um, nothing too extravagant, nothing too, uh, you know, he didn't do too evil. He, you know, he, he cussed and he drank and he did some drugs, um, but he lived a pretty average life. He just never believed in me. I'm going to send that guy to hell and let this guy in. Yeah, can, can you imagine no. a heaven filled with Ken Hovind, G Man, no. uh, <laughs> Max Colby? <laughs> Let's think about this for a second here. Jeffrey Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer converted to a Christian right before he died. Ooh. Is that guy in heaven? Are you spending heaven with with Jeffrey Dahmer after and a it, plate it, of fried chicken? He repented. Yeah. And if you are, are you okay with that? Are you yeah. okay with uh, him? But you know, your your family members who maybe didn't do anything bad. The only thing that they're guilty of is disbelief because there's not enough evidence is that really warrant does that really warrant you spending eternity burning in hell i don't think so i don't think that's rational to think that way i think yeah. it's sick to think that way no I, I i totally agree i mean i i think the uh ultimately if you know the belief system predicates on on belief alone then i mean what what are you really sort of like funneling at that point? Are you just gullibility? Is that what you're sort of like you know picking Control. out? I mean, I, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I, I guess I guess you'll have some uh, serial killer deathbed converters too. So I, yeah. I guess you get some of those too. But why not? Why not? Uh, if they're dying, what do they have to lose? They just have to say a few words and they get to you know spend a uh, eternity in heaven. Is that a loop? Is that really a, a loophole that a god? A super knowing, all knowing God would create. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, think, I, I, think, I have an argument that you don't. You're not really. This, when when a theist says, "Look, at you know, you're choosing to go to hell. You're you're choosing not to accept Jesus, or something along those lines, right?" Um, here's the uh, a counter like that I I have. You're not you're not making a decision to say, "Hey, I have in front of me heaven and hell. I'm looking at them. I'm seeing that they have some kind of ontology." I'm going to decide to go this path. I want to jump into the fires of hell, which, by the way, I do not believe exist, but. That's that would be a decision, right? I have I have information that I can make a cognitive decision based upon the information available to me. When you're being told things from other people, most of them being very untrustworthy people, because I'm sorry, but a lot of the evangelists, matter of fact, of most of the evangelists that I run into are all oh. not very well. There's some, uh, you know, Seigart's evangelistic. He's a trustworthy guy. He just he really believes it, right? He's not trying to lie to the people mm -hmm. to promote their his narrative, right? But there are evangelists, especially on YouTube, that lie. They outright lie to He's still their wrong. Narrative. <laughs> but but, yeah, but, but, but you're not, you're not making an informed decision though 
right? So when a, when some when a theist says, "Hey, you're you're deciding to go to hell," well, no, you're not, because you're not making a decision on do I go to the heaven or do I go to hell. When I make a decision on is do I have enough information to believe this person or this story? And by the way, you're not actually believing the story as much as when you hear it from the, the theist. You're at, you're evaluating the credibility of the theist a lot of times. Yeah. Sure. And Steve, Steve, I, I, uh, I, I like your counter argument. I, I often take a simpler route. To be fair, I, I often say when someone's like, oh, ultimately you choose to go to hell. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. And they're like, oh, but you're gonna, you're gonna go. I'm like, oh, but who, along who's those gonna, lines, who's, 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 who's gonna, who's gonna send me? Like, yeah. Along those, along those same lines too, is yeah. that uh, that I think to me is the, the, the the top motivator for why people are Christian in the first place. If you mm. took hell out of the equation, I don't think you would have nearly as many people who right. are a Christian because I don't think that on its own people would say, no, I love this God. You know, I think it's that threat of you or your family members burning alive for eternity that motivates people the most. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Kyle's favorite oh, fallacy is because because it's called argumentium ad baculum, which is a, a whale penis bone. Right, uh, <laughs> but it's it's the argument from the cudgel, meaning that believe me or suffer the consequences. Right. And yeah, the, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Roosevelt's uh, foreign policy, <laughs> but on a celestial realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then the Jordan and I sort of touched on this in an earlier video, but you know, I I as sort of a caveat i'm talking out of my ass here but i i've seen like an interesting trend in religions where religions that intend to proselytize and spread the faith often seem to have a built-in system where they they have it or, or a built-in threat right so for like for example like choose something like judaism right they're not they're not trying to convert you know they're not trying to spread the faith you know what are the consequences for you know not being a jew Right. I mean, they don't they don't believe in hell. So there there aren't any consequences. But religions that intend to spread the faith often have this sort of, you know, uh, back burner argument where like, you don't believe what I said, do you? It's like, well, you know, I have news for you. You know what I mean? If you don't believe what I just said, you will suffer the consequences of that. Toast. And I, I've just seen that interesting trend in, you know, sort of proselytizing religions. Yes, and so, I, I, I'm Jewish by, by culture. My mom's Jewish, right? So mm. I heard that Jewish people are automatically saved from some people. But, uh, you know, I, I, I have a friend, um, Dr. Kenny Rhodes. He's a, one of the, a nice theologian. He's, he's a very brilliant man, really sweet guy. And we were talking the other day at lunch, and he said, Steve, I've, I've seen people die in real time. I mean, I've held them as they actually die. And I really do believe that during that moment, they're giving a chance to accept, you know, the, the narrative or, or oh. not. Right. And, and and I'm thinking about this. Right. And I'm like, so what you're saying is that people that, um, you know, live their whole life uh, one way, if they accept at the end, they're, they're good to go. Right. And he's like, I, I believe that's something to that. Even even after passing, he thinks that you can still be saved. Right. And I'm thinking, OK, so, you know, you, do you think that I'm saved? He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I, even though you don't believe, you know, you, I, I can imagine I wouldn't want to believe in a God that's going to send somebody like you to hell. Right. Oh, and so I'm thinking this. If I end up in hell. I would be going, hey, blame him. It's so, <laughs> it's so frustrating him. because I like Kenny Rhodes too. Like I, I like Kenny Rhodes too. He's a great but guy. That's not what the book says. No, he's I know a, that, but, but you got to admit, he's universal. That's not what the that. book says. Like you can't make that. How can you honestly say, I think that there's they're given an opportunity, uh, even past death, when it says none of that. Well, well no, there is some standard for it. Um, when Wait, Jesus what? supposedly died, he went down and preached the spirits for three days in spirit prison, and some of them were saved, and they were... they. Were, but that doesn't... Oh, but okay. see, it doesn't tell you if they were dead spirits or if they are spirits that never lived. It's very vague on that. Even if it did... I, 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 I would want to see those passages, too. I'm not entirely convinced that's what the Bible's saying, either. You know what yeah. I mean? Did, didn't well, just say he Bible? went into... Did, <laughs> I mean, didn't it say he just went into the ground for three days? Yeah. No, it says he went to the spirits and, and preached for three days, and, and, and I think many souls were saved. Or something, or something. So what if you did? I, I, I'd be, I'd be very interested to see those passages. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like, experience. It yeah. doesn't say that, that 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 therefore gives people the opportunity once they're, you know, that that may be just a one-off event that happened when Jesus went down there because that mm -hmm. is a pretty big deal. When uh, that raises a different question: What did Jesus do to uh to warrant going to hell? <laughs> That's. I mean, what did he do to to warrant death on a cross in the first place? I mean, to satisfy his father for his own father's creation. I mean, it, yeah, because she ate an apple. Oh, he and, an apple. And, and don't forget, his father is also him. 
<laughs> Women, that's up there. Oh, there's another thing. There's another reason. What is the Trinity? What is this? What is the what is this? Uh, God mm. the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all one person, but they are not the same. I heard I heard an argument that that was sort of an artifact. It's not an argument actually. It was more of an explanation. Um, <clears throat> that that was sort of an artifact of because the. The New Testament especially is sort of an amalgamation of a lot of these different myth styles where you have like Judaism, but you also have kind of Greek mythology and pagan myths too. And they were all sort of combined. And so that's why Jesus was um, sort of a demigod in a way and also why there had to be a trinity. It just sort of flowed more with the time. I, I don't remember that argument or a explanation very well, but it was something along those lines. I'm going to show you a uh, a um, a chart that we had to know in um, in in uh, Sunday school. Yeah. Um, this is what we were told, and this is true. This is a a graph that the Southern Baptist Convention put out, and uh, this is supposed to be a triangle here. Okay. So here's what you have, right? The Trinity. God is the tr part of the Trinity. Uh, Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Jesus is the Trinity. All one, right? Yeah. But here, God is not Jesus. Jesus <laughs> is not the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is not um, God. God. <laughs> they are all the Trinity. Um, I have the passage for you, by the way. It was oh, yeah. I'd like to hear it. Yeah, First Peter three nineteen twenty. by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, and whence the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. So then now, he, he went to prison. Now, it didn't say hell, right? Well, the spirits in prison, they, 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 again. I think that might mean hell. The, the, the concept of hell. Now, the eight souls, by saved by water, people obviously you know think is like the Noah's ark, but some people have interpreted it to be um, like, after death, it's I don't know. Again, when you do these, uh, uh, when you're doing an eisegesis of these things, it's like you can add anything you want to it. So, sure, you know, mm -hmm. write a simpler sure. book. Write a simpler book. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's another thing that um, I don't know when I discovered this, but as soon as I did, it was shocking to me. Um, just like the the, you can't separate the Bible from how man made it is and how man crafted it was. I mean, it, it's just this amalgamation of of books that have no real cohesiveness and no real coherence or at least internal coherence. And I, I know I discovered at one time, I think that the four gospels were, were four of 12 uh, possible ones. There's like a, a gospel of Thomas, a gospel of Mary, Judas, like, Judas. Yeah, yeah. Judas. There's a ton of them. And, and it, you know, in one, uh, I think it's the gospel of Thomas. Uh, Thomas paints Jesus as a boy, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, messing around with his father, lengthening certain pieces of board just as he was about to nail them in and things like that. It was just, it was just like a, a whimsical fairy tale of a story. And then you find out that, uh, you know, like the, a lot of translations went through all these Chinese generations and, and were added to and subtracted. And it's all, I mean, it's just, it's just the, the hermeneutics of it alone make it impossible to judge in English. You'd have to be a, a Greek and Hebrew and, and Latin scholar just to know anything. Council of Nicaea, uh, you, the Bible is composed by books picked and voted on yeah. by a group. If this is really the inspired word of God, who are they to decide which books become the Bible? It, it ultimately boils down to which of these books – um, give the, uh, the 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 most credence to the principles and the rules that we want to make for society. So um, let's pick the ones out that lean more towards control, like with the women thing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want women uh, having uh, their kind of place anywhere. Give me the book that, that tells them to shut up when they're in church or to be submissive to um, their husbands. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me to see today in an age where uh, women are – uh, at the forefront of everything, you know, they're not st standing behind anymore. They're taking their their place at the table to see how these religious, uh, e you know, evangelicals, apologists turn these verses around to fit current day trends. You know, because mm -hmm. how do you tell a woman who is independent and uh, strong that in church she's not allowed to speak? How do you pass that off? 
or that women can't be pastors. SJ uh, is old and Steve that uh, she doesn't believe that that women should be pastors. How do you square that with the you know? How are you a woman and okay with that? Like if if that is real, how are yeah. you okay with that? Yeah, I, I mean, it, uh, yeah, I genuinely don't know. But it's it's like Jordan's quote earlier. I think it was uh, as as I remember, it was like, "I shall not suffer the woman to teach." I think <laughs> something like that. Some, something like that, and and it's like I can't imagine being a woman going through the Bible and being like, "Oh, okay, th this seems like divine wisdom." You know, I, I should shut my mouth. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it, it right. just it it's not something that I would find compelling. Even so. more harmful than that, you have uh, pastors like Stephen Anderson, who I. Uh, I don't hate many people, but if there's anyone that I hate, I hate Stephen Anderson. Is he the Texan pastor? Uh, he's pastor? Arizona. He's Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. He's he, the uh, one that all gays need to die kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Not even for that. Um, mm -hmm. I hate him for his views on marital rape because he got up in a in his in a sermon in front of the church and said that there was no such thing as marital rape the bible the bible dictates it that once you say i do as a marriage vow that is consent for every time you want to have sex until the day that one of you dies until then you don't get to say i don't feel like it tonight you don't get to say i'm not in the mood and you don't get to say no there is no he is preaching something that is illegal in all 50 states because marital rape much to his chagrin does exist. It is a real thing. And you have people out there in that uh, congregation, women especially, who have to sit and listen to this man who they think is uh, has been touched and ordained by God. Tell them that no longer can they say no or they don't feel like it or they've been doing, you know, going all day long. And they don't you know, they're they genuinely are too tired to uh, have any kind of uh, uh, activity like that. And they're hearing this guy tell them too bad. Suck it up. That's outrageous. Outrageous. Yeah, yeah, and, and and just sort of building off that point. I mean, if you take that to where it logically ends, that you know, if if there is a God who you know either approves or disproves of what you know this Pastor Anderson is saying, right? So if if he if he uh, you know approves of it, you know, or, or I guess if he's not doing anything about what this guy is saying, does he approve of it or is he just not going to intervene? All right. So if he's let, let's say that he doesn't approve, but he's not going to intervene. Then why are people gathering every Sunday to listen to what's, you know, to someone kind of tell them what they need to believe in life? Like why, why do they need to get, you know, sort of instructions from another human being on how to live? I, I'm, I've always been confused by that. It's like, why, why does this person in front of us know anything more than I do? I don't care. I don't care if they've gone to seminary school. Yeah. I honestly, I don't care. They're, they're reading the same passage as I am right now. Yeah. Why do I need to God be told? God doesn't intervene on those things. I mean, Stephen Anderson used to be real tight with uh, uh, Kent Hovind. Uh, he's the one that called him from jail. He was the one that got the audio recording of Kent Hovind saying that, well, I, I can't do a Kent Hovind voice, so maybe I will <laughs> translate when, when I'd say it, but he, he's on, he's on air, uh, audio literally saying, well, I don't recommend that we kill gays, but if the government does it, then that's fine, right? Mm. That, that, that was Kent's Jesus. narrative. Was that, oh, well, no, I don't think we should be going out killing gays, but of course, if the government doesn't, and of course, this this was big news back then, and, and he used to be tight with Kent Hovind, but then Kent Hovind did the did an abomination. He did a heresy. He yeah. left his wife. Right. You, you know what's crazy? Uh, uh, Stephen Anderson has a guy that uh, that idolizes him. He's in every movie that he does. This guy, this uh, other guy's a YouTuber. I'm not going to mention his name because um, I'm not going to give Brat towel any sort of publicity <laughs> but um this guy is a uh, he's a 22 year old preacher um uh, he preaches in church but he's a he's a devotee to steven anderson we've had him on our show twice and i have sat across the uh, cameras from him where he looked at me in my face and said yes the government should still be taking people like you and putting them to death for um uh, simply loving somebody of the same sex and, and, and that narrative is one of the reasons why i left theism um in 2008 especially there was a there was in california there was a uh men there were a pass of course that they call it a uh, proposition for for gay marriage and the lds church had invested a lot of money to, to to go against it and i was thinking at the time 
why would a church have political leanings like that? Why, why would a church get involved in politics? Whatever happened to secularism and separation of church and state? And why on this particular issue? Uh, and that was my breaking point. I mean, yeah. so even though I had a long transition and it really wasn't, you know, a, a, a moment where I said, you know, I no longer believe, that was at the point where I was like, okay, I'm really, I'm just done with all this. Across this country, religion is on the decline. It's, uh, it is, it is tanking. It is tanking fast. And uh, the, uh, with the, advent of the internet and uh, people's access to information uh it has woken up a lot of people and no longer are people willing to be okay with the uh the the sexism the misogyny the homophobia the murder the death the incest the uh the just the evil and the amount of blood that that has been shed over that book that book is responsible for untold amount of death all throughout history that's the constant it's always had undertones of religion in e almost every war in uh every battle every uh, the monarchy how many uh, lives were shed uh, between the catholics and the protestants under uh, queen elizabeth and, and mary and and henry the eighth and then even as up in america up in the or in the like uh the I think it was the 1600s, the Salem witch trials, because one verse said, never suffer a witch to live. Mm -hmm. How many people died and, and, and were crushed to death or hung because of that one sentence? And if you can walk away and be okay with all of that at the end of the day, if all of that's acceptable for you and um, the things now that are currently out there, then more power to you. I just think that you are, you are not a – um, a, a decently thinking person if you're okay with worshiping a deity that's okay with that sort of uh, bloodshed. And it all comes down to like just the endless contradictions, right? Because you learn, you know, in, in, in a church context that, you know, God is able to touch the hearts of men. He's able to touch the hearts of men, right? He did well, for Pharaoh. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, appar apparently he wasn't touching the hearts of, you know, those who engaged in the Salem witch trials. Apparently he wasn't touching the hearts of the priests who were, you know, molesting children, you know, from the, the hometown of where Jordan and I are from, actually. We're, so if we're from Pittsburgh, yeah. and that's where, you know, one of those, you know, recent, oh, yeah. you know, Catholic, you know, uh, sort of rape scandals emerged. Oh, yeah. And, and it's like, it's like, you know, ultimately, you know, a Christian would say these things are due to the fallibility of men, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you, and you're like, okay, that's fine, but why, you know, if, if God is, you know, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, why can't he simply, you know, inspire a thought, you know, sort of touch a heart of someone to be like, right. you know, and sort of impress upon someone the significance of their actions and say these things are, you know, inherently wrong. The devil does but, it all the time. But he doesn't. The devil but, 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 yeah, but it's like, and, and I've actually seen in my Facebook feed a few Catholic apologists that you know Jordan and I know from our high school. They've been like, "Oh, this this isn't representative of the Catholic Church." You know, these were you know individuals, Bullshit. and it's like, you know, I I just they they don't see that contradiction of of if why if God is capable of doing more, why doesn't He do more? And why does it keep happening with the Catholic Church? This this is Stephen I's uh, like Stephen I go hard uh, against Catholics on this because we take the stance that um, knowing what you know, knowing and seeing from this grand jury report that uh, your ties that you're given this this organization are uh, a certain percentage of it is being spent on relocating priests accused of this thing, continuing to pay priests accused of these atrocities. If you continue to tie that organization, that makes you complicit as well. And I know that's a strong statement to make, but it's an accurate one because you can take that money and you can give that money to actual organizations that that is never, ever a question. Thousands of organizations do charity work that uh, they don't have to deal with any of that stuff. But you're giving money to an organization that knowingly is shelling out money to people who have been accused of, uh, of, of assaulting, sexually assaulting a child. That makes them complicit. Yeah, can I um, let me read my tweet that this is a tweet that I have pinned on my page. It's been up there for since August 16th, 2018. So it's been up there a while. Um, so it's got a lot of uh, retweets and the likes. But, but what I said is this, and it's a controversial thing that people um, have got, they go after me for, which is fine. I want them to. Oh, uh, it's on controversy? But, no. 
<laughs> but it's, yeah, we, uh, we can't have that on the show. <laughs> what I wrote. I wrote to every Catholic that remains within the church. You are complicit in criminal activities. If your God is a moral and just God, don't you think He would understand you taking a moral stance against injustice? If not, then your God is immoral and not worth worshiping, anyways. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, very much the same sentiment over here as well. Yeah, and uh, I, you know I, what I, 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 oh, no, I was go, just going to say, no, Kyle, I've actually never thought about it in terms of who people choose to give to, though. I thought that was a really powerful way to put it. Yeah, you can you, you can give that if if you're giving money because of the the good that the Catholic Church does. And yeah. number one, that's a that is a uh, a, a lie in itself too, because it's the least efficient charity ever. <laughs> the biggest one of the biggest horrors that's happening in uh, in. in on this planet that people are okay with seeing happen is that the Pope uh, takes a stance on contraceptives and condoms that is killing millions in Africa. Millions yeah. of people are dying unnecessarily because of a stance on condoms. And uh, give me good that the Catholic Church does. Give me the actual good that the Catholic Church does, and I will show you countless other organizations that can do that same thing without – uh, being okay with the murder or the or the uh, the endless suffering and dying of people in Africa and the assault that takes place on kids, I will give you multiple examples that can do that same work without all the bullshit that comes along with the uh, the Catholic Church. Yeah, and the overhead for the Catholic Church. I mean, the church is worth, um, and this is bare bones, probably around ten to fifteen billion dollars. Highest Jeez. estimates of around twenty billion. Um, it's not like they're in a uh, need for 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 funding, right? I mean, and most of that is going to opulence. Most of that's going to maintenance of buildings. Most of that's going to investments in Italian stocks. So there's a lot of things that uh, it, you know, it's not going to this charitable type thing that as people think is going to. Yeah. So, Steve, how much of that did they spend on um, the, uh, four, the the, the priests billion. and the cases against them? How much? It was four billion, I believe. Four billion, four billion dollars wow. of people's money that they, in good faith, give this organization because they Holy think shit. that it's the right thing to do. That that God told them to. Four billion of that is that was going. Paying, that was paying off witnesses. Was going to, to off pay off that that and the legal fees, fees. legal right. fees, uh, the the priests' salaries. And whatever else that they can use to, uh, to towards child abuse. That's obscene. Over fucking billion dollars is going to that. Holy shit, that's disgusting. Actually, I, yeah. I, I did. I didn't know it was that. I did not know it was that. Yeah, yeah it, it varies from three point eight to four. Um, I've Holy seen. fuck! What do you, I mean, nominal amount of difference. Ten dollars is too much. Ten dollars is too much to go to that. Ten dollars is too much to go to some guy, so, some piece of shit that is accused of assaulting a uh, a girl because he has the uh, the authority that they think is ordained by God. This man is from God. Who am I to uh, to uh, fight back or tell anybody when he tells me not to? My soul might be in jeopardy. When you use that sort of power against a child, you are the most disgusting garbage human on the planet. And the fact that they're getting four fucking billion dollars, which is the uh, the equivalent to some countries across this planet, then then you should be ashamed of yourself if you continue to funnel that kind of money to an organization that's going to spend it on that shit. And, and we're and we're being told that we're the hateful, bigoted ones because we're telling people <laughs> you can spend your money other places. Fine. I mean, you, you can give whatever. other organizations. Get, there's many other Christian organizations. We're not. It's not like we're saying you you shouldn't give money to Christian organizations. Right. I'm I'm all for that if, if they're very charitable, <laughs> if, right? If, if Jesus is real, if Jesus is real, if God is real, do you think he's sticking around the Catholic Church after no. this shit he's seen? No. <laughs> no, he's the first person out. No, no, he, no, no. He, he loves it. He's watching it right now. He's 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 chilling there watching those scenes. He's and just, that and yeah, if he, that is true, then 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 uh, think about who you're going to be up there for it uh, all of eternity. I'll skip my hap my, my ass happily into the flames <laughs> before. Uh, but you, you, you got to be careful on YouTube nowadays because it's so funny because these are all high level discourse, right? Nobody's condemning the individuals per se. They're yeah. saying that they're horrible human beings. I think they're just either um, like in the Catholic Church. I think they're they're just misled a little bit, a little bit right? I think, you mean I think, the I think they're doing right. well, right? So I'm not condemning the people, right? But mm -hmm. you know, we've been called rape rape. Uh, uh, what was it? What did a dean call it? Rape apologists. Rape apologists. Yeah. Um, and child child abuse child victim abusers. Uh, I'm yeah. saying that uh, because uh, we 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 called Dean out on his nonsense from Red Pill Religion. That oh, all of a sudden we're we're, 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 too, we're, actually, yeah. we're abusing a child oh. victim of child molestation. I'm like, do you understand? There's no correlation there. Why are you bringing <laughs> him up? Why? <laughs> but, but, but but we're being called out on that narrative. But, but YouTube, you know, is like very careful on what's called hate speech, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. all a big thing yeah. on YouTube now. And yet, there's nothing that we probably have said 
that even remotely is constitutive no. of hate speech. So, so far, we've Quite condemned rape. Like, <laughs> yeah. We, I don't understand that. Yeah. We've said factual things. I'm sorry, but if you continue to give money to people who have or who are actively spending it on the defense of people who abuse children, that is complicit. Here's an example. Let me, let me put just so there's no question. If I give Steve $5 every week, right? Because Steve tells me that he needs this to eat lunch with. So I keep, I give Steve $5 every week. Well, I learn that Steve is taking that money and he is using it to buy heroin, right? He knows me so well. Am I <laughs> knowing that this is this money is going to for Steve to buy heroin? Am I complicit in in this? Or a better example, if he was gonna if he was saving up money to murder someone, let's say I find out that he's mm. he's saving up this money to murder someone, and I find out that he is going to spend this money that I'm giving him every week to have someone killed. Do you think a court of uh, or a prosecuting attorney would not hesitate to charge me with complicity, knowing that that was murder was going to take place? You bet your ass they would. I would be. Uh, I would be charged I, I just, for accessory. I just went from drug addict to murder for hire. Boy, that's just, okay. <laughs> yeah. but that's you know how it, that's how it works, though. That makes me complicit, knowing that he's going to have somebody killed with the money that I'm giving him, and either not stopping to give him money, or telling people what he is actually doing with this so that it can be intervened. I am complicit when that guy gets killed. It's the you same thing. Insane, actually. I, I want to know what's going on inside the, the Catholic mother or father's head when they read a, another headline. Like there, there are people in our hometown uh, that read about the Pennsylvania Catholics, uh, you know, sex scandal, right? And then the next day sent their kids to Catholic preschool or whatever. Like mm -hmm. what, what the fuck I, are you thinking? I have asked, I have said, and I did a poll on this, and I was like, you know, do you feel – if your kids are more safer with a, a atheist babysitter or a Catholic priest, and and still people were saying the atheist, they, I mean, somebody the Catholic priest would be safer with. I'm like, are you really going to make that argument? I mean, seriously, going to make that argument because I, I, it I, depends I, on the, the, the priest and the atheist. You know what I mean? Like, I well, can I mean, I all think things being equal on both. Well, Saratus Paribus, all things being equal, if it's just the information you're given is that this person's an atheist and you're in the kids hanging out with him, and this person's <laughs> an atheist. atheist. No heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not even a question, right? I mean, I didn't think it'd be that controversial. No, I had Catholics be, be just going, well, yeah. no, I, I wouldn't let my kids with atheists. They're immoral. And I'm like, do you understand what's been going on in the, in the, well, in the, well, the reason? Like, the, the reason is, though, here's the reason to answer your question. Religion has the ingenious mm, marketing like, scheme mechanism that it implants in someone's head it's got this fail safe where um it's it tells you that the moment that you start doubting your eternity is in jeopardy like that's a huge thing the moment that you start doubting um you need to be aware of it and that you're questioning uh god's role so what that does is it traps people people i think by nature are curious people by nature question things they want to know the answers to questions that they have they're curious religion dulls that dumbs that down and then makes it to where if you get too curious you're messing with your eternity here so a lot of people continue to send their kids to um to catholic school the next day because those priests were gotten to by temptation by the devil um, this is this is the devil's way to make us lose our faith he wants us to say Okay. Oh, there's something wrong with the Catholic Church. We need to hold our kids back because that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to be victim of uh, of, of this in, in entire uh, charade that he's made. Um, the devil got to the priests, and if we go along with it, the devil wins. And, and there's also this this uh, this sense of community in the, inside the religious, uh, mm. or, at least, or at least within the Catholic Church as well. I mean, very much, it, it's a cultural thing, and I've seen you know, this argument sort of, you know, uh, pushed at least twice now where people will say, you know, the Catholic Church is ultimately, or these people, you know, who behaved poorly within the Catholic Church, they're similar to family members who are behaving poorly or have made bad decisions. They're, they often will say, would you support those family members? who have made bad decisions, you know, what would you support a family member who had, you know, who was a rapist or a murderer? At the end of the day, would you still support that person? 
And I, you know, I turn around and I'm like, well, no, I guess not really. I mean, if, if, if it was a family member that did these things, I would ultimately condemn it, mm. you know, condemn this person. And, you know, I, I would hope that they would change ultimately that we could, you know, rekindle some sort of relationship, but I, I want nothing to do with them right now as a child rapist. Yeah. You would distance so, yourself from them. I mean, I, I've distanced myself from family members, not because they've done anything heinous by any means, but because of other reasons, sometimes there's just reasons to, to not associate with a certain person. And if it's fortunately if that person's family, I don't think it makes much of a difference. If, the, if there's reasons to be distancing yourself from somebody, you, you do it. It's funny you, you say that, Steve. Um, to, to, uh, tomorrow on the show, actually, we've got a, um, a, a woman that faced that very same thing. Um, she found out that her, um, her husband was uh, inappropriately touching kids, and she was faced with the decision of turning a blind eye to it or – turning him in and um, we're going to be diving into what yeah that's not a show i'm looking forward to tomorrow to be honest with you what came wow. along um what, you know what goes along with that uh sort of choice because it is a, it, i mean we it's easy to sit here and say oh it's an easy choice and, because that's exactly what i would say now it's an mm -hmm. obvious choice you turn that person in i think when you're actually in that situation and your entire life you know is on the line it takes a lot of bravery to do what she did you know, was he? Uh, did I mishear that? Was so? Was he religious or or not? Was he like a religious leader or just just a guy? I uh, he wasn't. He, he no, he wasn't a religious leader. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. okay. it was just a. Um, I, I'm we're diving into the um the sort of mindset that that because there's a, there could be a lot of people watching the show potentially who may be in that same position who may mm -hmm. be um having to struggle with. Okay, I know this about somebody, whether it be a, a loved one, a relative, a friend. What do I do? And I, I'm hoping that maybe she will um, sort of, uh, you know, per give people the, some good advice that will uh, help them out in, in the right decision, which is getting, making sure that person doesn't harm another child. Yeah, wow. it's, it's tough to listening to that kind of stuff. I was, I was having a conversation with a friend recently. Who was telling me that um, you know, the growing up that they were being inappropriately touched by the boyfriends of the mother, and what did the mother do? Nothing. Right. It was their fault. They were dressing them provocatively. They were leading them on, and it's it, it, it's not the first time I've heard stories like that. I mean, in fact, matter of fact, it's pretty common because I've heard it quite a few times. Yeah, um, a lot. And and and. and yeah, it's, it's of course from us looking in, you know, we have you know a different perspective because we can see the whole big picture rather than being in that situation. But it's difficult to listen to that. It is not easy, and I'm not a very emotional person. But even I'm like, holy crap! I don't know if I can really sit here with listen. This is so tough to hear. Yeah, that's it's, that's heavy. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's important. Mother does that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, that's that's crazy. I, I know there was I, one. I don't get it. I, I don't want to drop any names or anything, but um. Actually, in this, in this, uh, <clears throat> I guess it was kind of a loose association that my uh, religious affiliation was sort of like tied into. Uh, a few years ago, actually, one of the uh, sort of like elders, or he wasn't an elder per se, but he was some sort of, you know, higher up in these organizations. Uh, was act there were actually like allegations levied against him, and I spent hours around this guy like hours upon hours and nothing ever happened with me, thankfully. But uh, I, mean, I was young at the time. I was like 10, 11, 12. And I spent like many, many retreats with this guy. Do you believe and, it? What's that? Do you believe it? Do based, believe on your, based on your interaction with him, do you, do you think there's, there's truth to this? Uh, well, that, the point that I was getting to, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not in a position to know. I mean, sure. I was 10, 11, 12. I don't think I was really kind of aware of what the signs would be at that point, to be honest sure. with you. I mean, from my memories, he was a great guy. Nothing, nothing would have tipped me off to anything. But what was really interesting about it was because, you know, my family came to me uh, with, with the information about these allegations and said, hey, uh, like, we just want to make sure that nothing ever happened with you, right? Mm. And I was kind of shocked, and I was like, holy shit, like, I never would have guessed that this guy, you know, would have been doing these things. Allegedly, of course. I don't know what the actual, you know, happened with the charges or whatnot. But what was really interesting is I said, you know, no, nothing happened, thankfully. You know, there was a moment of exhalation, and then it was just kind of gone. There was no thought of, like, okay, well, 
why are these people who were on one hand celebrating as being like spiritual insights and spiritual guides into like helping us understand the Bible more? Why are those people also the same people who are more proportionately than the population, you know, molesting kids? And it, there was never that tension that was brought up. It was just, oh, well, thank goodness it didn't affect our family. And then we mm -hmm. kind of moved on from it. It was just like a really, it was kind of a really disturbing thing. People yeah, don't want to, people don't want to be faced with that. I don't think like uh, it's, it's easy. Like when that, that's probably a, a genuine sigh of thankfully, you know, we don't have to deal. Thank God it wasn't our family, yeah. but you know, thank God yeah. it was somebody else's family. It doesn't right. fly with me. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Right. It, it make um, any sense to say, thank you, Jesus, that it was some other family that got molestation going on. By the way, I was an ugly kid, so nobody ever had to ask me about that. Nobody <laughs> this can be fixed, too, this, so. can, this can be fixed, too. Um, stop with these archaic laws about priests not being able to uh, either get married or be involved in sexual relationships. This is not something that God uh, – Commanded. This was a a rule that was put in place uh, several hundred years after the church had already uh, started going. This was not something that God passed down. This was something that the church decided should be uh, the way that it is. And if you stop with that, I'm not saying that it would all go away because it takes mm -hmm. a special kind of uh, you know creep to uh, to harm kids, but it can't hurt. It can only you know, help alleviate the situation, but they're not doing any yeah. of this. They're not willing to budge on any of this because they can't be wrong. It's infallible. They're infallible. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, is I, I would never make the claim that there's something about, you know, religiosity that makes people, you know, uh, attracted to kids. I, I would never claim that, but sure. if you want to molest kids, where's the best place to do that? It's in the, it's in the Catholic church. Right. I mean, you have, you have, pristine access to young kids who are insanely gullible being told that there are men in the sky who are watching them if you know and if you tell you'll be sent to hell and if you if you are discovered the church will pay for you to be you know shuttled from parish to parish where you can have fresh victims like it's 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 appalling it's disgusting and, and, and ultimately it does go back to that you know ridiculous creed of christianity where you know, you don't have to apologize to the victims, right? You never have to be accountable to the victims. You're only accountable to God. So if, if you do these things to children, you don't have to turn around and tell their families, you know, you know, apologize, you know, make reparations. You merely have to, you know, confess your sins and receive forgiveness, right? It, it, it does create that, you know, that environment where, you can do pretty atrocious things and still, you know, expect to be in, in good favor with God. And doesn't so. that piss you off? Like if I were God, <laughs> if I were God, the the front row seat of hell would be saved for people who use a position of authority under my name to I, I think, harm kids. I think yeah. it's even more iniquitous than that. Here's the thing. The, a lot of these priests – were actually using the, 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 the this you know what they were doing to the children as religious moments, saying God yes. wants you to do this. You know this is this will help you be saved. This is cleansing wow. you. This is for your own benefit. I mean I'm that if, if, there, if, if, there's, if there's much more evil than that, it, it's only a small margin to the very very bottom of the depths of humanity. I mean that, that's just Steve. They were giving crosses. Uh, priests but, were giving crosses to. Uh, uh, kids, I forget which uh, which church this was from, but they were giving crosses to kids that were the most vulnerable, so that other priests would know. It, it, it was a, it was a symbol to them to let them know that they were more susceptible to these things. Now, how yeah, is that guy yeah. going to be forgiven? Yeah. How does that guy get to go still go to heaven? But the yeah, guy that's, that that's, a, that's a racket. That, I mean, that's that. Those are planned machinations. Those are, those are what I kept saying to, to me, and I, I and I don't get flack for this, but this I, I really do honestly believe this that the church has become a institutional. A crime organization. It is. It's the mafia. It, 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 it all, kind of all, all comes down to, I mean, just the uh, sort of divine, uh, you know, spectrum of sin, right? I mean, like, you know, you know, raping kids is pretty bad, but it's not quite as bad as not being fully convinced of the religion, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, you know, yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. You know, I, I mean, you, you, you can be saved for this, but you don't believe you're screwed. Oh, 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 yeah, exactly. Same. I mean, there's yeah. all things are the same. 
who, like, how is that true too? How is me? Yeah. How is me lying to my grandmother because she asked me how her meatloaf was? I thought it was horrible, <laughs> but I didn't want to break her heart. How is that the same well, the, as the, priests raping little kids? That's ludicrous. There's That's a feeder of that too. Um, if, if, if there's an argument that all sins are the same, that means literally all sins have to be equal, right? There cannot be an outlier right. to that. But in the Bible, there is an outlier. The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is considered to be an unforgivable sin, and then what that entails. I think it's a little more complicated than what people it's think. The only one, right? um, it's not just denying of the of God. Blas the holy the, the way I, I remember reading and interpreting it is that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is having complete knowledge, having full knowledge of a deity and then rejecting him. Satan would have would blaspheme the Holy Ghost. But we as men can never do that because we can never have pure knowledge, full knowledge of God. Oh, I can try to the day but, I die though. Fuck you, Holy but, Spirit. But uh <laughs> but if there's if there's if that's something that is a sin that it has a different punishment then then clearly it follows logically then all sins are created, created equal because now you have two categories you have these sins and you have this sin they're not equal it's it's simple reason right yeah the, yeah. the, the blasphemy of the holy ghost is a uh interesting idea i mean so like uh you know it also comes down to well you know if you don't know about me and you don't worship me i'm pretty pretty angry at the end of the day you know i'm, I'm pretty angry that i'm not being worshipped by you and you don't know about me but if you know about me and you're not worshiping me, oh, I'm very angry. You better be worshiping me. You know, <laughs> I'm very, very mad. <laughs> you, said, yeah, I, you know, he, it says that uh, God is a jealous God. God is a uh, three of the Ten Commandments are all about Him and um, and worshiping other gods before Him. Uh, it's just it's so like when you if you hear all this stuff, like if you are somebody that's watching this 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 podcast and you are a a believer. How can you still be at this point in the podcast? Like, how right now can you still uh, honestly tell me that you're okay with all of this? That all of this that you've heard is, uh, and I know that you you said you had uh, you had other stuff that you wanted to get to. I, I hope we didn't take up too much time. No, I've um, been loving this. Yeah, this is a ton of fun. Um, but like, these are all legitimate questions. Whether you think that we are uh, we're we're being too we're bashing religion, um, we're yeah. not. We're stating factual events that have happened and and asking legitimate questions and i have not to this day had any answers to any of these questions which is why i remain um i'm actually anti-theist i go beyond atheist i think that religion is uh in itself harmful and um it is something that's dangerous to uh to society so i take it a step further you know what i i can tell you about what the answer to your question would be sure so so like for instance if i so i am all of my extended family and immediate family they're all still just as religious um you know i, I kind of i don't anymore but when i was really you know because when i was living at home you know i'd go to church with my family and <clears throat> when i was becoming not becoming because i mean i never got baptized actually um Ooh, it's over for you yeah, I know, I know. I cuz I think that Adam you you got baptized, right? But I I was the no, only I, one I was, I was never baptized. Oh, no, you were twice, was, you know, really? done three times. I mean, there's, there's how many I thought you were, when you were a baby. To do it. Oh, well, well, when I was a baby, I think there was some sort of ceremonial thing, but there, I think there's a I mean, there's a pretty big distinction oh, okay. in, in in the church between, you know, the ceremonial, you know, baptism as mm -hmm. a child cuz you know, it happens to everyone. But, you know, I at least not, in my church, <laughs> well, I, I, at never least in my church uh-huh heathen for life but yeah. I, I was, no, yeah, but I was I, a baby. trouble no but i i think there is i mean at least at, at my church there was a big distinction where people you know who were coming of age would make you know uh, a public profession of faith through baptism and uh I, i've obviously never did that so i oh, okay. i don't know what to say when people are you know asking if i've been baptized because no it would be the answer yeah no would be no, the, yeah. no would be the answer i think <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, i was so, twice Anyway, go ahead. Right. No, yeah. So, so I was gonna say, like, um, because I, I used to to kind of have these discussions with you know my family and be like, well, like, haven't you guys considered this? And of course, I mean, they hadn't, which is no fault of theirs, I guess. They had just never, they they had never been presented with a lot of these. But so, for instance, if I if I you know went to my parents and said, hey, like, I, I want you guys to watch this uh, this video that I did with these two interesting guys and, and listen to it and tell me, like, how you could possibly believe at the end of this. Um, I'd be shocked if they got through it to the, to the you know, first of all. But if mm -hmm. they did, I, I think their response would be, 
um, to undermine our credibility psychologically. Just to say, like, well, you're you're so gleefully wrapped up in this disavowing of you know our creed that I think you've become your heart has been hardened. You know, you've yeah. been, you've become. Now, are, they, are, they, are they young earth creationists or evangelistic or what's? Uh, they're evangelicals. They they believe in a young earth. Uh, okay, so, so that yeah. see that that narrative. Okay, my my. I'm going to say specialty just because I don't know what else to call it. But when I first got started on YouTube was debunking your earth creationism. This okay. is how a lot of the Kyle and I got started. I had Ken Hovind on a few times. Where we were just, you know, re wrecking him. Um, <laughs> and so that's something that I could like really address for your, your family. So if you ever had a video on that, you know, that's what they should listen to. They should go listen to Apologia, especially something like that, who so makes good. these videos explaining, mm -hmm. right, why young earth creationism is just absolute nonsense. Um, and he does a very good job because he's what I don't know if you guys know Paul Gia very well. We we want to uh, have him on, yeah. I he's oh, he's, he's he's excellent. Oh yeah, yeah. you should you definitely get him on. He's he's cool. He, he he got he he literally got a start on my 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 channel. Um, but uh, I told I told him I said, dude, you got you know you really you you're just you're gonna be awesome. You're gonna be famous, dude. Trust me. And what he's doing this for though is actually for his kids. I don't know if you guys know this, but no, I don't. This is public information, so they're confidential. Mm -hmm. Um, he has he he left his his wife split. And they had children, and the children are still in 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 the church, and especially in the young earth creationism. And he was very much into young earth creationism back in the day. Okay. And and now when he left it, he, and he's realizing how wrong it is. He's trying to make up to that and trying to get his kids to mm -hmm. recognize the that is wrong because he feels guilty because of the the misinformation he had put up all those years. And I think that's one of the greatest motives to wow. have a channel that I've ever heard oh, yeah. in my entire life. That's Our, incredible. Here's the thing that I'll ask your family though, uh, up until this point, if they got to this point, mm -hmm. whether they think that um, I, my heart's hardened or Steve's heart's hardened, um, they're not. Uh, I would ask if they could genuinely get past the, you know, what has what are what we were wrapped up in and objectively answer these questions like mm -hmm. why is it that x why is it that y why is it that well you know the thing with the the garden of eden um the contradictions the uh, the the murder the, the god seemingly being okay with killing a, a general's um daughter for him winning a war answer these questions and if you can't at the end of the day answer these questions Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why you can't understand this. If God is giving you the ability to understand your eternal soul, like what can happen with that, and supposedly giving you the steps to do so, why are the steps not clear? Why are they so vague? And then why are these steps chosen by a group of men in Nicaea uh, to be those steps? What if there's more? What if there was other books that were supposed to go into this uh, but weren't chosen in this American Idol version of, uh, of the Bible? Why can't you get answers to these questions? And if you can't answer that question, then I would go to answering yourself, why are you willing to be okay with all of this horrible when you don't have to be? Because I'm sure your family are really good people. And if this wasn't about a God or deity, if you just gave them a fact sheet of somebody that was homophobic, <laughs> misogynist, sexist, uh, believed in slavery, they would they would distance themselves as far as they could from mm -hmm. that person. Why is this any different? Yeah, I mean, it, it's weird. I think because I've I've done almost everything I can imagine to you know bring up all of these counter arguments and just say like, but how, like how at the end of the day could you ever believe these sorts of things? Um, and the problem is, is that I, I, I so I think that um, the the logic of these questions never actually gets touched because there's an emotional barrier to them. Sure. Um, I think, especially, I mean, people. I mean, my parents in their fifties, and they've believed their entire lives. I mean, yep. that's like, you know, I mean, I've known Adam my entire life, basically. At age fifty-five. If someone just presented to me all of these things that I had never known about Adam, all of these like contradictions in in how he acts and these terrible things that he's he's done, he's a real ass, from what I understand, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a terrible guy. <laughs> I would be so conflicted and torn as to, and it'd be so tempting, even if I was presented with strong evidence, to just to just disavow it and discredit it and say, yeah. I don't know, but I just can't believe it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different type of fact because it, it, it's contrary to what you, the narrative that you've been exposed to. And mm -hmm. I have found in order to get people out of young earth creationism, 
is that you have to find just that one chink, that one piece of data that is just irrefutable that sets a domino effect in motion. When I had uh, somebody leave one time, it was because they were convinced, they were big fans of Hoven, absolutely convinced macroevolution didn't exist. That was, they were done. Steve, you're an idiot. Why do you believe in evolution? Macroevolution is no such thing. And I was like, well, let me explain it to you. And we actually had a debate on it. And he literally came back a couple of hours later and said, hey, you know, I just checked what you said and it seems to be right. A month later, he left Young Earth Creationism. So they said one chink, that was his chink. Now other people have other chinks that they might like, for example, Ken Hoven, I've got him to admit two of his claims completely BS. And he wow. and he was aware of it and he doesn't care. That is some other people have looked into that and went, huh. I think what you're well, saying, Steve, is get rid of Ken Hoven. As long all of your all of your examples lead back to Ken Hoven. So for oh, yeah, he's one of the get, he's, yeah, well, if they were to get rid of Kent Hoven. Um, I will. I will say this, and I don't usually say things like this, but there's a handful of people. If the, if the, on their passing, I'm not going to mourn, by any stretch of the imagination. The world would be at a better better place, and, and I'm not trying to be you know vile on that. But I have to look at the big picture. Or what's worse is when people say this. They say, "Well, how 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 are you judging people? How, if you don't you don't have a belief in gods, or how do you have the moral standing to to question things that are in the Bible?" Uh, and, and me as a person who loves virtue ethics, right? And I love morality and concepts like that. I'm able to justify it and destroy them in these conversations, and they they don't even know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. And you're like, "Well, you're you know yeah. you you still don't have moral standing." I'm like. You have no idea what you're talking about, do you? <laughs> yeah, but you do. That's what you say, Steve. You have moral standing. I have moral standing. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm saying you're uh, you, to the to the Christian. Oh. Okay, let's let's take them at face value. Let's let's pretend mm. I don't have moral standing, but they do because they believe in God. You should be able to say that the God that you believe in you is, think, right? is advocating for slavery and murder and all this other. But you're not saying that that's immoral. So where does that put the uh, the, the the blame there? I think well, that's matter on that too. Exactly. I've, I've said the same thing to them. I'm like, look, at if you if God grants you these morals, and even if you subscribe to what's called divine demand theory, which is an ethical subjectivism position, God gives you the ability uh, to, to, to formulate uh, what is right or wrong in normal ethical theories. So, so if God has this ability and he's given it to you to reason and to have a decision of what you think is permissible, morally permissible and morally impermissible, and you're looking at something in the Bible going something like the slavery or that women can't be raped in marriage, and you don't find that morally repugnant, then I, I don't know where you're getting your sense of morality from because I, I mean I could I could I could understand Paul just saying well you know okay God doesn't really think those things okay okay at least you're acknowledging that you you're going to want to believe in a being that doesn't have that kind of repugnant morality mm -hmm. but not all those do Stephen Anderson believes in a God where that you know you can't be raped in marriage I'm sorry that that God that he worships if that's what he's advocating is not a moral being it's just not but do you guys do 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 you guys know the uh, the apologist Frank Turek? Oh yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So oh, yeah. I was listening to, um, you know, uh, what's that kid's name? Alex O'Connor. Yeah, uh, they had a debate on, on one yeah. of the best I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, it, it was it was an interesting talk, but I I I gotta confess, I actually paused it like probably it's like an hour long, maybe like thirty five minutes into it, just because I couldn't stand the conversation anymore because, you know, I think Alex is very smart, but Frank, he. I don't think he's being disingenuous at all, but I'm not sure he can honestly follow the arguments yeah, that were being I, presented. I, well. I, I, I don't think he was being disingenuous. I think he couldn't follow it. Like he just he couldn't get past the idea of objective morality. He kept saying, Well, how can you, you know, at the end of the day, is the Holocaust just subjectively wrong? And it's like, well, you you have to, you know, and you know, Alex kept saying, Well, given that, you know, we value human well being. You know, and that's that's sort of like an assumption we're going off of here. You know, human well-being through that context, of course, it's objectively wrong that you know, you know, people you know suffered you know under you know for years at a time, and you know he kept expanding on this, and he was like, "So you're saying it's not objectively wrong?" And it's like he, 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 he misses it. Sounds weird, right? And and I happen to like Alex. I I've talked to Alex numerous times about morality, and he will listen to me. Um, I disagree with him on a few things, but he. Um, Alex has some difficulties in his ontology. I don't know if you know rationality rules. Um, I've seen a few of their videos. Brilliant guy. One, did, one did, of the did, most did a response persons. to Alex, right? Yeah, and I happen to agree yeah. with rationality rules. I mean, rationality rules knows this stuff inside and out. I've never seen a person, who, uh, a, a lay person, that knows philosophy as well as rationality rules does. So I happen to agree with him on the stance. But I mean, it's not like Alex has it really com completely wrong. He just has a little bit of things that I, that needs to be pointed out. But here's here's the thing, because he, he, he Alex tells me he's a moral error theorist, which I happen to attend to as well. 
but a more Eric theorist is not going to subscribe to more realism um, or even more objectivism or subjectivism. It's a, it's a different thing altogether. But what Turek does is this. He's trying to conflate objective with absolute. Hmm. And that doesn't work that way. Now, I yeah. do believe objective morality can exist. Uh, rationality rules and, and um, that might tell Andy, a lot of the people believe, and Sam Harris believe, and Richard Kerr will say this. This is how objective morality would exist. And it's not that complicated as people think it is. All it is is this. If you're going to ground it in some kind of goal, like amoidia, which is human flourishing, or harms and benefits, if that's your grounding, it's called a hypothetical um, uh, imperative. And a hypothetical imperative means that I'm going to be doing something that will get me to my goal that's objectively true. A moral a fact would be something along the lines of if I want to win a race, I will I have to run fast. That is a fact, right? I mean, you, you then you can say, well, what happens if you don't want to run the, the race? Well, then you're not doing the goal that you're going for, right? So objective just means it applies to, to people in every in those situations if those are your goals. That's what an objective moral framework would be. What if you want to win the race by taking a car though? <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact though. Did, the fact you, did, is, you, see, did you guys see uh Frank Turk it remains yeah. the same? Christopher Hitchens? Uh, who against Christopher Hitchens? Frank Turek. Um maybe, uh, actually, but I'm not right. Probably, yeah, I've seen so much Christopher Hitchens. Oh, yeah. Hitchens. oh man. Yeah, yeah probably you, somewhere down the line. He was, he, he was brilliant. Uh this guy uh asked him a question. They were doing the QA and um he said, uh, you know, why don't you just stay home? You you come in and you you oh, make all of these okay. yep. you make all of these allegations against religion and it's not harming people. It's not harming any people. Who is it hurting if I want to believe in God? And uh and Frank Church are there smiling and Frank Church goes, Yeah, um uh, where does uh what is how do you how do you word it? Something about like ultimately what is uh what does it take to be evil? Like he misses off all these things and he says, what, what if all these things are evil? Like, how do you know what evil is? And he goes, no, Frank Church says, where does evil come from? And, uh, his Hitchens looked over and he goes, religion. And the place <laughs> just goes crazy. <laughs> so if you want to watch, if you, if you want to see Frank Turk get his ass completely handed to him, yeah. I mean, he takes it that entire. Yeah, he's, a, he's an apologist. He, he again, his goal is like William and Craig. They're go. They're there to win an argument. They're not there to make sense. Well, uh, he they, lost they a lot of rhetoric. He uh, lost it big time. Frank, Frank Frank Turk's actually going to be on Atheist Edge coming up here soon with Jim Hall. Oh really? Uh, oh. Yeah. And Steve, I, I've been meaning to say this for like at least an hour and a half now, but I have seen you on YouTube probably in three videos at this point. I recognized your face right when you came on. Like I've, uh, I've, I, I, what, what channels have you appeared on? I mean, I'm sure it's a ton, but you asking me? It's quite yeah, notorious. Yeah, I, yeah, I've it's seen you like, notorious. yeah, I've seen you like three different episodes. On <laughs> I'm, YouTube. I'm on a show called Non Sequitur Show with Kyle. Okay, okay, but have, have you no? But have you guest appeared like on any? Yeah, other? I've been on. Yeah, I've, I've been on Holy Kool Aid. Um, I've been. Okay. Engineer. Yes, I have definitely watched. Um, that I've been on Atheist Edge. Um, I've. Uh, well, I've been in the uh, Amer the atheist community of Austin's Discord as a guest. Uh, he, that's not visual. He, he fights. He fights often with with uh, with with people. So you'll often see him. I'm a fighter. Yeah, I'm a scrapper. You'll, you'll yeah, see him. I, yeah. I I'm I'm the most loved, uh, hated person on the internet sometimes because um, I don't follow the narratives. There's fires every week. Fires but, every uh, week. And, and and this this is a bold statement, but I also feel like I've actually seen the debate you held with Kent Hovind too. I think I, I had have... twelve debates that I hosted with Kent Hovind with King Okay, Robert okay. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. So then I've definitely run into yeah. at least one of them. And yeah, yeah. we had King Crocodile I'll... debate him and destroy him. We had Bill Ludlow destroyed him. We had uh, Aaron happen... Raw. How many times? Oh, I, had... I watched the Aaron Raw one. That was. It fantastic. won't happen again though, because uh, about a month ago we um, we were supposed to have Kent Hovind come back. To the show, and he was going to debate um, this guy named uh, Esteban. And um, some things happened. It was supposed to be a Saturday night. Some things happened, and uh, we we were waiting on him to start the show. Um, he wasn't there, so uh, we called him. Steve talked to him, and um, he said, "Oh, I can't do it tonight. I can't do it tonight. We'll do it tomorrow. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow at six o'clock." So six o'clock comes the next day, and he's nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. um, he's he had been sending Esteban uh, messages throughout the day saying. Well, let's do it on my channel. I don't want to do it on non state Blah 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 blah. So we cut. We go live. Esteban's here with us. We don't find Kent Hovind, and so we're like, why don't we call Kent now and find out where he's at? Well, Kent calls in and says, uh, "I don't know what you're talking about. I never agreed to come on your show." Blah 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 blah. Well, our lovely producer Dave, which shout out to Dave, couldn't do it without him. 
he had recorded the, the day before and our conversation with Kent. And we proceeded to play it live to Kent there on the show. And oh. you know what he did? He hung up. Really? Yeah. Hung up. Kent, why? Wait. Wow. Wait, he, stop. Yeah, stop but yeah, it's, it's, it's a man different. of God. It's different, though. Never, I don't think, uh, it's a different standard when you hear him actively lie to our face and then hear him in his own voice refuting <laughs> what he just did. And if you can still follow that scumball after uh, that, then there's something wrong with you. Wow. Yeah, he did, he did, he did bold face lie. That was just, it was, it was unequivocal. Right. That's, that's pretty telling. Yeah. To wow. be honest though, people, people just, they don't, I mean, I know he has, you know, probably a steady base of acolytes, but at the same time, people that I've come across tend to just stumble across his videos. Right. Mm. And like, I, I'm not going to you know mention names here, but you know, someone I deeply respect who isn't, you know, well-versed in science, you know, was like, Hey Adam, what do you think of this? And he like put the screen in front of my face and it was Ken Hoven. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I couldn't like, like fully impress like upon him. Just like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, no. I, I, I don't even know where to start. I'm like, okay, well for one, like, you know, this guy went to prison, right? For like tax evasion or ta <laughs> well, tax fraud. I, I don't know. What structuring. Structuring. Yeah. Structuring. yeah I, I, I was like, tax evasion. I was like, okay, let's start there. You know what I mean? <laughs> With hey, this guy, but he's, he's a notorious fraud. So. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, I don't, uh, I don't see how he, he has, and he has no, like he, there's no new argument with him or anything like that. He's not, he's not interested in, in changing his ways. You mm -hmm. could take his debate. You could take two debates with Kent Hovind, um, in a tape and then cut Kent Hovind out of this one and cut, uh, Kent Hovind out of this one and switch them. It'd be the same except for Arn. Arn is the, Arn has the only debate with him where that, couldn't happen because Aaron literally asked him one question and held him by his shirt collar at that one question and did not let him move off of that one question. What Aaron, was the question? Um, it was the, uh, uh, the Flosny challenge. Yeah. The Flosny challenge. Um, yeah. hmm. but it, it was a, uh, it was a question that usually can't, if it had been anybody else would have sidestepped, moved into, uh, these examples, dog can't come from non dog, blah, 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 blah. But Aaron was, I mean, like a, a maestro at pushing him against that wall, and he's not going to let him down until he gives him an it. And we couldn't get past that. that yeah, we want, we wanted to know what, what was the original created kinds. I mean, here's the thing. Look, at the, if the Ark has 6,000 some odd species, mm -hmm. right, or, or kinds on it, and there's 7 million, 7.8 million extant animals today, obviously between that period of time. Somebody fucked time, up. There's, there's, there's been evolution going on. There's been speciation going on, right? I mean, yeah, you yeah. don't get 7.8 from 6,000 without some kind of evolution. By the way, hyper, 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 hyper. I mean, a lot of new species a day. Uh, yeah, Steve, yeah, literally. Steve, 10 species a day I have to stop, you, the, have to stop you, though. Uh, this is true. Um, there are people who think that God instructed Noah to take the semen of these oh, animals God. on the ark. And impregnate uh, animals once it dried out. So you're only taking one is one fee, the female. You let of the animals animal. on pairs. I'm just telling you what. Listen, I'm telling you what. One point seven of the. Uh, I'm telling you what. New the, age uh, uh, people have done. They've wow. done research. They've they found the ark. You know, most people believe that the ark has been found. It's frozen <laughs> in ice. <laughs> Um, that's a true story. Look, there, there was a there was a, the, a documentary right. team. Now there was yeah. a documentary team yeah, yeah. that uh, that portrayed this as being the real arc. Wow, yeah. like, the real fucking arc. Well, that was on that was on CBS, and that 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 documentary. I mean, it wasn't even uh, that no longer is even played because all that stuff was fabricated. The guy, the, I don't know if you know the story from that, but the, one of the guys was actually a, a divine a design artist, and they made him craft a. A, 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 a thing from the ark, a nail from the ark, and what he did was use a railroad tie that it had soaked in teriyaki sauce and uh, <laughs> some other things, Jesus and that and, and that was the that that was the uh, uh, the proof that it was a nail from the <laughs> and so so they don't play that really document <laughs> anymore. That, that's a he, uh, true story. Go look it up. The guy that actually did it won an award because if God it was is real, so realistic. If God is real, he's looking down, going. What the fuck are they doing? Teriyaki sauce, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, right, this, guess, but but that's, we got to admit, that's pretty brilliant because it, it, they said it looked exactly like you would find from some kind of ancient thing. And the guy literally did win a creative award for it. I, I wonder if the guy thinks that what he's doing is wrong or if he thinks that he's sort of the, the shining knight in armor coming to God's defense. Good. God really that's, is real. Good question. Am you know I, I mean? Is it okay to lie? Is it okay to lie if it's bringing souls to Christ? Yeah, that's called, that's called pious dishonesty. Good. Um, it's called bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they, they say the it's a Machiavellian type thing. The ends justify the means, but pi pious uh, dishonesty is a contradiction, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, many, many, there are many actors of it. I mean, like I, this kind of feeds into my next oh, question here. It's less of like intellectual question, but just more of like an opinion. Who's worse, Kent Hoven or Eric Hoven? Oh, <laughs> Eric. Oh, Eric. 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 Actually, ways, Eric. Technically, Kent, because if you didn't have kent you wouldn't have eric so yeah but er eric <laughs> I, I, I i can almost guarantee eric i don't think he buys into any of it i think eric yeah he's a eric. he's a snake oil he's, at least he's you totally snake oil yeah at least we know kent actually believes this i think eric, lines, he believes and, it. and two kent just not to defend kent owen because that's never what i want to do but when he got out of prison uh eric coven literally kicked him out of the house and sold his business out from under him he wouldn't sign it back over to uh to Kent, and that takes a that takes, a, I mean, to your own dad. You know, there's some crap going on there. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that, that takes some some shit to do that to your own your own dad. So that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. just kind of just quickly pl uh, plugging Apologia, just because we were mentioning it earlier. Like I, you know, he covers Eric so much. It, Jordan, have you seen Apologia? I've seen like a. I'm really not as familiar as I should be. Um, I've seen a few clips of a few of his videos. Yeah. He's yeah, they're 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 actually amazing. But he he whenever he follows, you know, because when he follows guys like Ken Ham, Ken Ham strikes me as someone not who he can't. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I know. Ham Ham's kind of tough to talk about because the thing yeah. is, I think he knows he's being dishonest on some level, but he's not very smart either. Like <laughs> he he he's really just not. Like so, if you watch that guy, you're like. Yeah, I can at the end of the day see how he actually is very convinced by his own arguments. Mm -hmm. But a guy like but a guy like Eric, he just comes across so much as a charlatan. You're like, wow, like how does anyone watch this? That he's crazy. Like yeah. he, he, he's an obvious liar. Ken Hove or Ken Ham's line, which I think is just the, one of the most dishonest comebacks that I've ever heard in my life. When he gets backed into a corner, he does this. Were you there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I were you there? Problems. <laughs> yeah, we've got a book, yeah, but, but we've got a book that tells us the answer. Yeah, but, but, uh, it's, it's so weird because like Saiten is convinced that that uh, Eric is a legit guy, and I'm convinced Saiten is legit. Uh, he really does believe this stuff, right? He's the best uh, too. I like Sai. Yeah, I like I do. Oh, you guys like that yeah. guy? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sai is actually I consider. I hate his arguments. Don't get me wrong. Friend. I hate his arguments, and when he de when he de uh, debates, it's annoying, and we've told him that. But yeah. as a as a person. Um, I felt I felt the same way as you you did uh, before um, actually getting to know him. But like he genuinely believes this stuff, yeah. and uh, out, outside of uh, the the debate or whatever, he's a pretty he's a pretty nice guy. I mean, he's yeah, really you nice. don't even talk about religious stuff. He's actually cool yeah. as hell. Um, but he's changed over the last ten years. I think he he, he wisened up. He learned that the old Psy ten stuff. Uh, I mean, he still does precept, but the, the method that he went, was back then was very, very much more aggressive than he has now. And I think he's reeled it back a lot. But yeah. he, he does really believe that that Eric uh, believes this stuff, and I, I, I disagree with him on that. I think that I was like, I think yeah, Eric's nah. bullshitting him too. No, no way. Hmm. Okay, so you, so you, so you guys not uh, know Psy Ten? Okay, so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, he's been on several times. Okay, yeah, I talked I, uh, <laughs> talk to, talk, talk to him quite often on Twitter. We just kind of kick it. He's talk. been on about uh, he's been on a, the show about seven times total, mm -hmm. I believe. And like Steve said, we'll talk. Um, uh, we'll talk in the. Uh, that's where I actually got to to know him. Is he's on the um, Discord, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I don't know, but he's okay. a hell of a nice guy. Okay, okay so you so you guys know. think that when he pushes these presuppositionalist you know arguments, you think that he thinks these are good arguments. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely convinced of it. They're horrible arguments, but he thinks that they're, he genuinely thinks they're good. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I, okay. Oh yeah. He's a true right. blue believer, but I mean, um, and, and he, don't, don't underestimate Sai. Sai knows the topic. Um, he, 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 he does know how, matter of fact, what's funny is when Sai actually talks about 
some philosophy stuff as far as like um, justification and other stuff. He actually is pretty spot on. And what he'll do is like I, he had a great argue, or he had a great discussion with Shannon Q. If you know her, Algie's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. One of our favorite people. And they had a great dialogue. They really honestly did. And you see, I, if you really listen to that, you can see a change a little bit in Sai's approach. He was really trying to explain to Shannon um, certain things like Hume's problem of abduction and a few other things. And he was spot on correct. He was right, right? He wasn't trying to manipulate her. He wasn't playing a game of gotcha. He wasn't running a precept script. He was actually wanting to help her. And um, Shannon re recognizes this now. We've actually had a discussion the other night with Shannon on this. But he, if you listen to it, it's a very different type of approach than he takes in somebody where he's trying to run a thing with a, against an atheist where he's just trying to shut them down because that's what precept is. It literally is to shut down the atheist. As Greg Bonson has said, uh, presupposition has one purpose, is to shut the mouth of the atheist. That's what it's for. It's not an argument. And it don't work. It's not an argument. Yeah, when literally, he, it's not an argument. When it, he it says... Really when, when he says that he um, he worries for your soul, like when he tells you that, when he says that, you know, I'm praying for you and he genuinely 100 percent believes that because I've had I've had some uh, some pretty deep conversations with him and um, I'm convinced that he genuinely believes that um, what he's doing is to benefit other people. They may be annoying arguments. I've told him this as much that I think, so you know, annoying. I'll even pick with him. Like he'll say something, uh, you know, totally unrelated to uh, debating or whatever. And I always follow it up with, could you be wrong about that, Cy? Uh, which is his, uh, which is his like tagline, you know, mm -hmm. could you be wrong about that? But yeah, he is a, he's generally, uh, I think a decent, uh, a decent guy. He's not, um, he's not the image that I have of him before meeting him. I think that happens that happens often, you know. You, you might get SJ is another one. Um, she she has quite the uh, <laughs> quite she's the a, she's a character. Yeah. But, but, but for example, look look at slide ten. Look at something like Darwin's deity, right? Darwin's deity is a preceptor too. Oh. Darwin's deity is the most is, is pretty much base level as you get. He's one of the most. He's the hard, worst. The, the worst human being on the planet. Is, I don't. Do you guys know who? Have you guys heard that name before? Darwin? I Darwin. have not actually. Okay. No, no, no. I tell you, I, I, I'm not going to go a lot of detail on him. I, I tell you this: there has a whole oh. channel on YouTube against him of Man. all his all his fuckery, all his mistakes, all the time he's made. He actually argued this. You guys, you guys are a philosophical channel, so you guys will probably know that he actually argued that affirming the consequent was a logic a rule of inference that was logically valid right <laughs> that i mean he actually valid, he argued that a fallacy was valid this wow. tells you his, his yeah please watch, him. please watch him if you do anything oh, he, before before please <laughs> watch darwin's deity you will get so oh, oh my I, God. I have broken my computer so many times listening to that um just Oh, it's Adam! Awful. Adam loves that. But, He's such a masochist. I, I am a masochist. I love just getting angry, but it's like such a well, terrible character trait. Darth Dawkins yeah. is your guy. Darth Dawkins yeah, is your guy. Darth Dawkins, <laughs> Darth Dawkins, Evolution Falls, Dancing with Hyenas, da Duncan Dawkins, Duncan Darwin. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so, but he, but his narrative is not to educate people. His game is to give a game of gotcha, right? He wants to expose. Mm -hmm you for being a philosophically naive white belt kind of person okay which by it's the way sophistry. i cream him I, I, yeah he, he doesn't even believe in god no he, he believes in god no he doesn't not, yeah, not he that that whole thing with uh that whoever doxed him or whatever um was able to um uh, somehow show that he did he does not he's just doing this for fun he's doing this troll uh, i don't know I, I i i know what you're talking about and i know and i know who did that but uh but but anyways uh long story short uh Darwin's Dawkins, to tell you how duplicable uh, Darth, Darth Dawkins is, is one time he actually went, and this actually feeds into to Kyle, what he said about trolling. He actually went into a Minecraft hangout of kids playing Minecraft, right? Kids, like nine and 12 year old kids, to explain to them the laws of logic and, and presupp. Hey, you know. and, and, and it got so bad that one of the kids actually said something along the lines of, dude, go, go fuck off and eat raw spaghetti. That's what he said. That's what he said. Like, well, I have so questions about that insult. Go yeah, it was like, it. okay. What it's is like, that? But who, but who, I, that was it. Who, go eat raw spaghetti. Um, but who does that? Who goes to a Minecraft video? Kids playing Minecraft. Wow. Well, what do you think of the laws of logic? How you justify the laws of logic? How do you know that? Whatever. It seems indicative of an empty person, to be honest. 
I mean, yeah. like, well, it, I do believe he trolls. Oh, yeah, he's one of the greatest trolls of all time. But does he actually believe this? I do. I'm convinced that he absolutely does. His, 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 his son, no, his son disowned him. I mean, his son said he's he's a, a, a prick. He, he's How? a troll. I don't, I, yeah. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Don't well, he's a troll. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a fact. I don't believe yeah. he believe, really believes in um, in God or whatever. Because when people – here's the here's the thing that pushed me to that. When he when people ask him, well, how about let me ask you some questions about your faith? He stumbles and falters like a uh, – well, Because a, he doesn't, have, he doesn't even justify his own faith. He has exactly. no idea. Exactly. Yeah. But he doesn't even try. He doesn't even try. He's, so he's – He's focused so much on the offensive then that he oh, yeah. he neglects the defensive. Yeah, the whole strategy for preceptors is always keep the other person answering the questions. Because if okay. you're answering questions, you can't really ask them, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't, so that's yeah. the, that's the whole narrative that the preceptors, especially it's Darwin. A, it's a game to him. It's all of it's a uh, I want to show how I sound like I know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, he doesn't. I know he's full of shit. And, and there's there's actually a list. I I, I don't know what ever happened to it, but there was actually a list of twenty eight questions that he will not answer, that he refuses to answer. And the reason being is because he's been doing this so long from the Pal Talk days way back when that they've compiled these list of questions that if he were to answer any of them, it would basically be a contradiction from something else that he said, and he <laughs> knows it. And this is why what happens is if you ask him any of those questions, he'll say, oh, you're on my troll list. You got that question from these, and therefore I'm not going to answer it, and you're done. Fuck you, dude. That's how, that's how he plays the game. I watched him one, one time talking to Ozzy and, and Malpass and um, a few other people, and one of the questions was asked by, I think it was a realistic nihilist, uh, a legitimate question that would have been a follow-up question from the line of, of, of questioning, right? Usually when you have a kind of some kind of interlocutory, you know the next question is going to be a natural progression that has to be asked, right? We, we've had these discussions. Mm -hmm. But one of the guys that was on his troll list had asked the question. And he's like, well, I don't answer the question of people on my tro troll list. And Ozzy said, well, you know, I was about to ask that exact same question. Uh, so can you answer it for me? And he said, and Darwin's like, well, no, because you you got that question from him, and I don't answer the questions from troll. And Ozzy's like, wait, are, are you for real? I, I, Ozzy doesn't curse us on camera, but this yeah. is not the most time I, I really wanted to say, are you fucking for real? <laughs> it seems like a very weaselly way to a. You, you have certain weasley. questions that are un. You know, it's very actually religious. I mean, you have certain questions that can't be asked. That's a yeah. good way to put it, weasel. Yeah. It's a weasel. It's a Jordan, Jordan, have you have you seen any side ten? Side um, ten, Bruggen Kate. Maybe, but to be honest, nothing's coming to mind. You, you don't know who he is? He, he did a debate with uh, Matt Dillahunty, another excellent debate. Could you be wrong? That's his uh, thing. Could you be wrong yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Jordan, well, like, what, like, his game ultimately comes down to he, you know, he questions how you can know anything, and mm -hmm. pretty much like he questions the, uh, pretty much the fundamentals we have to take, you know, um, we have to assume, right? For example, okay, that, like that, that, that you know that, that, that exactly that we can, that we can learn things, that we can okay. trust our senses. Ultimately, he questions you on those things, breaks it down to a point where you say, "Well, ultimately, you know, I I do have to trust that, you know, uh, you know, my senses are valid, that I can you know glean information about the world." And then he says, and then you kind of turn it back on him and say. Well, don't ultimately you have to do that too. He's like, not unless there is someone that knows everything right. that gives you that information. It's like, uh, don't you see what's wrong with that? Like, yeah, that's exactly you, what he does. Like, 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 don't you know that? I mean, I mean, can, couldn't you be deceived? Like, you don't know everything. Like, how do you know no, that? God, God tells him a way that he can't be wrong. Um, and it's exactly what it is. There, there's Hume's problem of induction is something that goes along the lines of, of you can't use induction to justify induction. So how do you how do how is the quote non-believer do you do you justify the use of induction the answer is you can't and that is true uh, he is right on that mm -hmm. but this but but he's in the same boat but yes. what he does is says oh well you can't justify induction which is true but he, he says well i have somebody that tells me the uniform of nature will never change <laughs> therefore i can justify the use of induction because he's telling me the all-knowing one that the 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 laws of the universe won't change the 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 laws of logic won't change and therefore i can i can know that the uniform of nature is true therefore i don't have a problem with hume's induction yeah. which is obviously crap right of course i mean it, it always happens to be the god of their cultural upbringing too i mean notice that 
If that it, was so simple to, follow, to to solve Hume's problem of induction, then why isn't he writing a paper on it and, and putting out and going, oh, look, I've solved Hume's induction. I can actually justify it. God. Yeah, that's yeah. not going to fly well in the philosophical circles. No, so, no. So, I, so I know, you know, S S Steve and Kyle, you know, have a, have a soft spot for this guy because I know him in person, but if you listen to this guy, he's infuriating. He's, oh, oh, oh man. He is. We oh. agree there. Oh. <laughs> you see the best debate with, uh, with side 10, um, where uh, he really gets, uh, I I think this is the, the the debate where he he lost the most. Um, watch him and Alex Botton. Hmm. Alex Botton really 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 um, takes it to him in that, and I think shows the the ridiculousness of the precept argument. Um, hmm. So that's that's precept's good. pretty much dead. I mean, one of the precept when it first came around was big. Whenever you're in a hangout, precept had to come in. So a group of us got together: Floyd F. P. myself. Um, Pow talkers, uh, Jack Angstrike, a whole bunch of people, and we're like, this. We we, we were gonna. I, I I learned the arguments, and then show people how to dismantle presuppositionalism. Mm -hmm. um, and how many presuppers do you see around any longer? Oh wait. Mm -hmm. oh, but you know, uh, correlation isn't causation, Steve. <laughs> yeah, correlation isn't causation. <laughs> That's true. But no, but I can tell you there was an influence there because yeah. uh, people people Are have a authority. authority. People have listened to our discussions with preceptors and go, holy crap, they got annihilated. Because once you know their script, it's not hard. It's really, it, it, they, the problem with precept is when it first came around, people didn't know these things, right? And they were getting their ass handed to them because they yeah. didn't know how to respond. But now it's just, it's just a game. Steve, Steve, here's the problem though. Like, if it, you know, the the presupp you know suppositionalist arguments are destroyed daily now. But here's but my main issue is they found a new audience. They do these street interviews where they ask you know random people who haven't oh, yeah. Yeah. thought deeply yeah. on these topics. Yep. And mm -hmm. they you know kind of Precept beat street epistemology. Exactly. Yeah. They, they they beat them down with these you know poorly constructed arguments. And their own audience is very impressed with it. They're like, "Wow, you know, like yeah, they, 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 sound, they sound pretty good to me." You know, it's like, and that's what kills me. That's what really ends up. No, you're out. right. No, you I, and by the way, I, I've seen one or two of those. But if you have a link of a channel that actually does a lot of those, please send it to me. You, you're on that channel, actually. Well, a uh, a your pre, a, your, your preceptors that go out. No, no, the ones that actually why go you, out and do that. The preceptors that do no, that. I I used to do street epistemology. Actually, this no, channel not, used not street epistemology. No, no, no. Um, oh. Precept Street epistemology. No, I mean I I know Anthony Magna Pasco. Um, oh, okay, fact, okay. I, I I I I had some concerns with Street epistemology very early on, and I go I, back and, and I, forth on it. And I wrote it. I wrote to him a very long uh, thing uh, of mm -hmm. my analysis on Street epistemology, and he was very receptive of it. Um, and I think they implemented a few things. And yeah. uh, and, and and I like I mean I like what they do. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. I just think that. There was some there were some issues I saw epistemically, and Ozzy saw, and, and a few other people saw. Um, but Anthony has a great heart. I mean, he's one of the nicest guys you ever want to talk oh, to. Oh, he's he's a sweetheart. Yeah, he's oh a my god, guy. That, that guy! I want to see him pissed off once. I don't think it can happen. I don't think I, his brain is wired that way. <laughs> I, I he I, just, I I think you're right. I, I literally never, don't think he, he has he the capacity. Just, he's just even keel. So I I, I mean I, I admire that. I don't know how he Incredible. does it. I don't have it. Yeah, <laughs> I have enough. Well, I think I think he's got a, I think he's got a good thing going. What he did was he took Peter Bogosian's model, mm -hmm. and he got rid of some of the, the shit stuff with Peter Bogosian's model. I'm not a fan of Peter Bogosian. Oh, whatever works for you, I think. You know, uh, there's uh, there's there's a place for all of that. I think ultimately, mm -hmm. it just depends on who it, who it is you're you're yeah. uh, interacting with and what they oh, will. I binge watch that stuff. Um, I, I binge watched his videos. It's, I was I couldn't yeah, get up to epistemology. I was like, this is fascinating. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I mean, I, I go back and forth on it. I, the episode right before you guys, no, the the episode before the one before you guys, is I talked with a a, a current street epistemologist. Uh, well, I guess quasi. Um, but he he was a guy who was uh, deconverted by an Anthony Magna Bosco video. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, it was about a year, year and a half ago, something like that. He mm -hmm. was a Christian who was actually like deconverted in real time in, in one of his videos and then started a, a channel of his own. And we, I don't know what, what's that? Was it good for him? Yeah, it was, it was a really cool thing to hear about. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I don't disagree with it at all, but maybe it's just not something that I personally am interested in. It, I don't know. Well, I, let, me, let me tell you something. I won't go into the, the real technical stuff. What my critique was, but the, the mm -hmm. big part picture, which is very, very basic, is that I find that the people doing these street epistemology aren't familiar with epistemology. 
and, and they, they they run the, the the problem of basically doing the same thing a preceptor would doing is is basically asking uh, bad argument questions and and basically if a person's going to change their position because you're giving them a bad argument are you really effectively changing their position or is it some temporary thing and then they go oh later oh yeah and i thought about that that was really a bad argument and they change their position back right mm -hmm. um which is a concern but it, but anthony knows how to ask the right questions i want oh, yeah. i watched a video one day of his and he asked a question that i've been I, I, I too am thinking all the time, and yet nobody brings it up, right? But he, and I word it a little bit differently. But he asked a question to people that believed in in rocks having energies, right? And rocks are oh, okay. amethyst, right? And I used to work. Not what? Work, I used to help. I used to help out at a metaphysical bookstore years and years ago. Oh right? man. So I was into the crystal stuff a little bit, oh, right? A little no. bit, a little bit. Years ago, this is going back time. I had a pass, people. I had a pass. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh my God! Kyle doesn't know about this stuff, so this is like we don't oh expose. Day. God, what but but the, the question. Oh, <laughs> Steve, no. Day forward, things have changed. Um, yeah, I used to wear a little crystal, but anyways, so. Oh my the, God. The person, <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, you're a young earth creationist. <laughs> Rocks can heal me. Yeah, that's, that's a don't, fair rebuttal. Don't though, you judge me. <laughs> yeah, that's no, I, no, I didn't really believe that much. It wasn't like that. But 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 long story short, he asked a question. He said, what what gives these powers to rocks to make them do what you think they're going to do? For example, a hematite for blood. What yeah. makes it such that case that it has that empowerment, right? And, 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 and they couldn't answer that question because there is no answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh now my there's God. no objective thing <laughs> by which this rock must do this effect. This makes sense though, because I asked Steve a question last week because Steve was having an argument with somebody over whether or not objectively rocks, Dan. By the way, he was thinking of. I'm sorry. Rocks yes. were yeah. rocks yeah. were atheists. He was yeah. having an argument with somebody about whether <laughs> rocks were atheists, and I'm sitting here going, "What? Uh, who gives a fuck? What if if you can't personify rocks, rocks like that?" And yeah. now it makes sense though. Now now I understand that you were genuinely concerned with those rock souls back when. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I have. I have. Um, Steve, tell no one else that story, okay? From the, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll well, I, I, I have a logical <laughs> proof that if if you meet if, if you do this, then rocks are atheists. There's atheists out there that actually argue rocks are atheists. I argue against that. I think to say that a rock is atheist is one of the silliest things I've ever heard. So I call them rock atheists. Who says <laughs> But I understand. She's a, she's been for years. She's been, been she has an argument. Rocks are atheists. Chairs are atheists. Plants are atheists. Rocks are rocks. Rocks are rocks. Yeah, you they don't have a belief. that. I I try to convince her of that. She won't listen. Who is uh, she? Doctor Jones tried to convince her of that four years she? ago. She didn't listen. Who is she? Kate. On a dance. Oh oh oh! oh. She's yeah. a firm believer that rocks are atheists. Rocks, Kate, rocks are not atheists. Rocks are rocks. Sure. I get sure. I get that, and everybody who knows this topic gets that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, she's she's adamant about. It. I don't understand. I, I why don't get she that. Won't let that let go. I, I, to me, that's a bad atheist argument. That makes me, as a non-believer, look bad. Yeah. When somebody's no. saying, "Hey, rocks are atheists." Well, well, what? It doesn't make. I see. I don't. I don't like. I am me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't let other people speak for me, or um, like, because the thing is, atheism is not a. It's not like a religion. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, uh, like when when uh, somebody in the church does something bad, it may look bad on the church because you're all members of that congregation together you all follow the, those same things with atheism it's only one thing that we all have in common you know what i'm saying like when they do something it doesn't look bad on me because the only thing that i have in common with that person is our you know i, I get the, that but as a whole conference. right but but still i mean this is one community and and you're all right i mean one thing that all atheists they don't believe in god that is ubiquitous between any way you want to, to call yeah, it everything else is, di is different everything, everything else, else, there's, there's some there's, there's differences and, and obviously you know i i have a different terminology i go by philosophical terminology um i don't know if they know but yes i i, I don't even identify as an atheist uh, i am an agnostic, oh i'm sure they but, know the world knows oh, it, i don't think they do but but but, but still we're non-believers right that's the key part non-believers so when when somebody's making very bad arguments to a theist i just sit there and cringe because i'm like Holy crap! Do you do you understand how bad this argument and this thesis is? Is this what are they thinking? They're like this this guy is just wow. They're they don't know what the hell they're talking that's about when they're making this kind of bad argument to me. You no, know, it's just like uh, if they want to know what I think, they can come ask me. But uh, that's, I, right. then that's I, how I do I it too. Right? Think that rocks exactly. are anything other than rocks. Yeah. I don't think that they are vegan. I don't think that they are <laughs> uh, <laughs> vegan rocks. They are homosexual. Oh, oh but, <laughs> Kyle, are we ever going to do that? Because I got to tell you. There's some vegans on Twitter that are just the, the most um, oh obnoxious, I guess, in your face. Are you doing something with that? 
I mean, I don't mind if we do. I'm not vegan. I'm never going to go vegan. I do what's like. His face, vegan. What's his face is coming on? Um, do you have a vegan coming on? They're yeah, so in your face. The guy that, the guy that uh, wanted to talk to you about it. Oh, that Dude. guy. Okay, so yeah, he's. I, I know who you're talking about. Um, I, I'm happy to have these conversations. I, I, I don't want to debate a, a vegan, but it's just like, wow, are they? It doesn't have to be a debate. Let's be a, let's be a conversation. Yeah, I'm not giving up my bacon, Kyle. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's weird. I mean, I, I'm not a vegan and, and don't really plan to be one either. But it, it, they do have a sort of ethical foothold. Yes on at least the factory farmer i mean i think oh, being yes yes yeah. and, and, and i and i get by the way i get ethical veganism i mm -hmm. do my sister is an ethical veganist um they have so a I point have, and they're right yeah. i mean they're right but, but see the, 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 right. Thing fix, the thing to fix though is the treatment of the animals right mm -hmm. that, that i do agree with right they, they should have the humane things no question about that that is an ethical consideration but that, but, but, but here's my concern. If all that stuff was taken care of, right? Even if there was a very humane way to kill an animal, they still wouldn't um, be, think people are right for eating meat. So at that yeah. point, you're not, you're not yeah, really satisfied. Totally. I mean, I, I, I tend, to, I tend, to, I tend to agree with them. I think that we're, I, I consider myself an absolute hip, hypocrite in this department because mm -hmm. I, I'm one of those people that dive bomb for the remote when the Sarah McLaughlin commercials come on and they're playing, oh, they're you know, terrible. arms of the angel. And like, I can't look at that stuff. I can't. Yeah. And if, if you, if you told me, to uh, that I needed to shoot an animal in order to eat, I couldn't do it. Like I physically could not pull that trigger. Yeah, but I'm yet I'm a Bambi killer. I fish though. I do. But fish. yet I'm okay with mm -hmm. eating meat. That makes me a complete hypocrite. I completely agree with. I I, I, do, I don't particularly think so. Um, I'm yes. not. But I I I'm not going to go out and kill a deer. I, I couldn't do it either. I'm, I'm a complete hunter. hypocrite. Yeah, but we're okay with somebody else doing. Oh, it. I'll, I'll eat the crap out of anything. Yeah, I'll eat it. <laughs> That's what yeah. makes us hypocrites. I think That's, they're right. Yeah. Do you, do you, have you ever hunted cow or ever fished? No, I refuse. I refuse. Now you're fishing. Do you, no. do you have an ethical argument I mean, against me? Yeah, I've been fishing, but okay. uh, but I when I was little, but now that I'm you know I'm older, I I, like I, I can do that. Not even to a uh, uh, a f like something about the 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 fish coming out and like trying to breathe for air. It just cr makes me like I can't do it. I'm too. Oh, no, I, get soft it. I, I don't judge anybody for that. I really don't. Yeah, I can't. Huh. I, I yeah. can't do it. That's weird because I, I I honestly plan to like after I graduate get way more into hunting and fishing because I, I think it, it's an ethical foothold above at least what I'm currently at which is just a total 100% hypocrite uh, doing ethical or I mean um, unethical buying of meats that were factory farmed yeah I, I and, and there, there's you know? there, there's a point to be made for that right I mean the factory farms there's problems with we're not nobody's gonna disagree with that but if you hunt for your own food and you do it humanely I don't have a mm -hmm. problem with that as a matter of fact sometimes it's beneficial to yeah. because of, of overcrowding of the herd yeah if but you are you really it, suffer more are you really are you really going to just completely hunt all of your food from i mean we're still going to at some point I, you know what if I, a, had, if I had to i would be a part of that, of that of that factory I, thing I, you know? I, you're you're a glamper so you you're, you're not going to you know understand this mentality i like live i can live off the land i wouldn't mind going to a cabin and be up there for months That's, at a time and just hunt fish berry forest i'm still with steve on this one not not to go, i love that stuff i love go, mountains not to go me, uh, i'm already halfway there <laughs> not to go like like full-blown hippie or whatever but like this is just genuinely how i think Mm -hmm. um they didn't ask to be just like we didn't ask to be here there's no way i could go up and 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 in a hunting situation shoot a deer because just because you know what i mean like because that's what it that's ultimately what it is what was it suffering what was it like if it was suffering because, and it, it, you found it caught in a trap suffering, that's different yes absolutely absolutely that that yeah. minimizes that's the goalpost a little bit yeah that's that, that's not a uh, that's not a uh, not a question um if, just like i would do a human that way there are humans that are suffering all around the planet that i think legal euthanasia should be an option oh for. yeah i mm -hmm. i i, I, uh, I am very pro uh, euthanasia. people shouldn't suffer that's animals shouldn't yeah. suffer either especially when you have animals that have the mm -hmm. uh, the same sort of uh, or similar cognitive abilities that that humans do like pigs they say are very yeah. much yeah uh, they're aware. close and we're putting them in cages called gestation uh cages where they can't turn around they have to spend their life uh stay in a position where they can't move they can't turn around it happened in new jersey there was a big bill up against this now that's just yeah no, i i i do agree with that thousand percent. Awful. but you know you know the people that are arguing against things like ethical um euthanasia Hardcore religious people. It always saying, is. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. no, you 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 can't take a life. I had this discussion on uh, when I was one of SJ's friends, and I mean, I was appalled. I was like, so 
you're advocating for the position that if somebody isn't suffering, that somebody's not going to live, they're they're dead. Basically, there there's no hope for them. I mean, you were exposed to five thousand ranking, you're going to die. Okay, Terry Sorry. Shabo. Not going to happen, right? Terry Shabo. Uh, so, yeah. So so the ethical thing to do from a higher moral vantage um, point, right, is to 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 kill them uh, you know basically to allow them to die more you know painful painlessly morphine or whatever um it's not to prolong their suffering for what what i asked them what is the gain that they're getting for a couple more days of life in agony mother Teresa, steve mm -hmm. suffering brings you closer to god exactly uh kyle that I'm, pisses me off though that, yes. that's one thing that is my trigger yes sir, I, I don't like when people <laughs> do when people make people suffer like that that's yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you do you buy do you do you give any credence to the like the happy cow argument that um if if you know a hunter uh goes out I guess it's not a cow it's a deer in that case but if a hunter goes out into you know the woods state of nature and mm -hmm. um, puts down a deer with an ethical shot it's a quick death it's it's probably a better death actually than the deer would get in the wild That's true. um dying of you know a disease or starvation or being torn apart alive by wolves or something mm -hmm. it. And on balance, that deer lived a happy deer life, you know, by any metric. Um, do you think that that's a a less ethical, or I guess less unethical, or maybe even a positive net experience for the world? I guess I would. What I would do is probably contrast that with with myself um, and say that the the what if the ro roles were reversed, and mm. uh, I have the possibility of getting hit by a bus, or ending up in a car accident, or dying of of cancer or any other kind of accident, um, you know, especially if you're like a, a, a construction worker or whatever, it's amplified, you know, you could fall off, uh, get heavy machinery. So um, would it be okay for a deer to take me out at this point <laughs> in life and say, because I've lived a, a relatively happy life mm -hmm. and I would not be okay with that. I'm, I go forward in li in life from this position. Now, even with that threat of things happening to me, in the future because I still want to, you know, at base level continue to live. And mm -hmm. I think that would, that would be the same. I mean, with the deer, I have no way of knowing how it's going to meet its end. Maybe it continues to be a happy deer. It's in a good location and it just dies of old age. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you ever heard of uh, Memphis meats? No, it's this really interesting company. Uh, it's a, it's like a, a technology startup company that is, uh, they've already successfully honed in the technology to artificially grow meat cells in a oh, vat. Yes, I have heard of like this. Yeah. yeah, like you're brewing beer, basically. Right. Um, and it, it, I mean, it's still super expensive. It's like ten thousand dollars for a meatball or something. But what? so it's not. It's, what? Well, because it's you know it's in ex experimental phases right now. So it's oh. you know they Better don't have it. Meatball. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try a ten thousand dollar meatball. Yeah, I mean it's it's basically it tastes like a regular meatball, I guess. But it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, do you do you have any ethical qualms with that? No, um, and I think okay. that that not only that would solve so many issues. Not only yeah. would it, once they ramp, you know ramp it up, not only would it solve the the mistreatment of the animals, but it also could be a step towards curtailing hunger around uh, the the globe. If you're able to produce this on a mass scale, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Like you could you could grow infinite amount of um, of this product without having to wait for the cycle of yeah, you know, a cow and um, the numbers that come with that, and the mistreatment that come with that. I think it's a great idea. I think it's yeah. Fantastic. yeah. Um, there's actually this thing called uh, th what it is is a 3D printer that prints steaks. How? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They print a print a steak out. It's supposed to take pretty similar to meat. Um, and, and we should be we should be at the point in the society where you're able to take that steak and take a big scoop of THC infused butter <laughs> and slather it all over it because That's one hell of a meal. Marijuana needs to be legalized nationwide. It's it's uh, yeah. That's well. Oh, we totally I mean, agree I, on that. I, I don't know why it isn't at this point. I mean, <laughs> but I, 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 I heard they're introducing a bill on the federal level to be moved from a class one scheduled drug that may, may pass this year. I don't even smoke anymore. I, I'm simply doing it for the monetary all, legal, for legal. the monetary benefit yeah. to the states. This could this could benefit our state uh, tremendously in terms of like uh, it answers all kind of questions. Like we should be in a, in a position because nobody that wants to smoke pot isn't smoking pot now because it's illegal. I can of guarantee course. you that. I can of guarantee. You. So, make it. so make money. So make money. Well, and also, I mean, uh, tax it and, and regulate it so it's safer right. for people. Yeah, I mean, it's the thing is, no one's, uh, no one's 
ODing on uh, on weed. They're ODing on you know, like Windex that slipped into it or whatever, just yeah. to you know because it's not regulated. It's, it's have, ridiculous. If you have alcohol legal in this country, with uh, alcohol is dangerous as fuck. Yes. There are uh, it, it amplifies uh, uh, domestic abuse, mm -hmm. uh, general abuse, uh, car accidents. It is a it is a devastating uh, substance. If that is legal, then you're gonna not have something like marijuana, which the worst that happens when you smoke marijuana is you drive half the speed limit. Like <laughs> that is a, you know, I said that as a joke in a debate that we did uh, a week debate that we did with actually it was SJ and SJ got back with me uh, the next day and said, I checked out your, uh, your, your comment about the, uh, the driving slow. turns out that's correct. <laughs> there were more tickets. Yeah. Written, there were more tickets written for people going under the speed limit. Um, then uh, they, they overcompensate. And they're, it's they're, it's, they're, it's yeah. a it's a for the most part harmless yeah. drug, and yet we're so hypocritical when we're allowing alcohol to uh, to remain legal. I don't get it. I don't, yeah. get it. I don't understand it either. And I mean, it's weird because I mean the crux of a lot of Republicans, but especially libertarian arguments, is is you know based on personal freedom. And I mean, it, unless the harms are so egregious as to outweigh you know, the freedoms that we should be giving people, which they're not. I, I don't understand why there's not a Republican uprising of support for these things. It would generate more revenue. It would, it, I, I, you can tax it. It's, I don't understand. Let me well, give you, yeah. a, let me give you a bit of visual though, real quick. Okay. Let's take, yeah. uh, let's take John Boehner when he was in Congress as the speaker of the house, you would see him all the time crying like a baby over something. He would get tearful and, um, you know, he was just so, he was so miserable. He's like Eeyore. The moment he gets out, <laughs> Look at what he's doing now. He's in. He is the. Uh, he is in charge of a company that grows marijuana, and he is in a magazine smiling like there's no tomorrow. So don't tell me that uh, that there is a reason why marijuana should s still remain illegal. Because uh, did John Boehner all of a sudden lose his moral high ground? Did he have him in the first place? What happened between him being in Congress and him getting out? Money. <laughs> Somebody paid him enough to get him to uh, to oversee uh, a company that deals with marijuana, and he goes smiling all the way to the bank. So, what is it? You tell me. Yeah, yeah, and I think I like the way you put it. I mean, it's basically um, autonomy versus societal impact, right? And mm -hmm. they have to be weighed. And I don't see a impact on society with pot. Of any of any real consequence, nowhere near what we have for alcohol. More Doritos, more Doritos manufacturing. That, that's yeah, it. I mean, slightly less productivity, maybe, but I, you know, I, I believe that uh, <laughs> drug. Deal, I used to say this joke because um, uh, I used to do I used to do stand up on the uh, on the side when I was in college, and one of my favorite jokes I used to say is, um, I think that drug dealers should start selling. Like if you wanted, really wanted to capitalize in your neighborhood, if you really wanted to be like the top seller, you know, shoe stores sell socks, right? So you should sell stuff that complements your product. So if, if a <laughs> if a dealer ran around with one of those big boxes with fun size packages of chips like Funyuns and Doritos and stuff, <laughs> he would be he would be the number one guy called because you know that every time you get a dime bag, you get you know two uh, two Doritos and a Funyun. You know, I, I told <laughs> yes. I, I was on Pimp Monk's show yesterday morning. Or this morning, actually, this morning, and I, I had told him that you used to be a comedian. And Pimp goes, "Kyle used to be a comedian." I'm like, "Yeah, you didn't know that." He's like, "Yeah, I didn't know that. I never heard, heard him say anything funny." <laughs> yeah, I knew, I knew that's sort of, I knew that's sort of the point. <laughs> get, get some new material, Pimp Monk. Uh, Pimp. Pimp, Pimp. I I believe you were a uh, pastor in a past life, though, Kyle. I wanted to be. I wanted. I would. Be. I would totally believe that. I could see. I it. couldn't imagine. I I just. I wanted I, to be. I never, I never got into any of that where I wanted to evangelize to people. I never uh, well, I still think I, I still think I evangelize uh, to some extent on things that I'm passionate about. But people say that all the time. You know, he's yeah. going into, uh, he's going into, he's, he's preaching again, is what they, they say. That's just because um, I, like, I am passionate about things and they animate me, and I don't like, res I don't hold back, and I don't yeah. apologize for, you know how it comes across or anything like that. I'm just me. You know, I have no, sometimes I have no filter. Uh, I try to be tactful. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes I say things that are um, emotionally fueled and charged and I'm okay with that because people are emotional. You know, we, we all feel and we all react and you know, I'm unapologetic and relentless on that, that aspect. So um, yeah. I, I, I wanted to be a preacher. Well. I wanted yeah. to be a preacher growing up for sure. I could definitely, I think you have the skill set for it. 
Should I go back? What's that? Should I go back? There you go. Uh, you know, I'm going to say no to that one, actually. <laughs> Come to the altar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, you, I, I, you can lapse into it way too easily. <laughs> I could have uh, made more money. I could have made a lot more money. Uh, yep. Oh, uh, hell yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, can you imagine if we if we were like flat earthers, man? Oh, man, we'd be making. Oh work. no, I'm talking about being a televangelist, Steve. I oh, whatever. Be, I mean, it doesn't I matter. Any, any uh, uh, deal with televangelists. Give me your donations. If if, if you <laughs> only if you only. Uh, I love Robert Tilton. He's my he's the best because <laughs> he used to say, "I'm praying right now. I'm praying that God's telling me a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars right now." He's telling me, and and don't don't hold back from God. Plant this seed. Plant this seed today, and salvation is yours. I'm like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm feeling the whole, I'm feeling the whole spirit. spirit. <laughs> That's amazing. The, the best slip up of that guy is when uh, he appears and he's like, <laughs> Satan gave me this message, and he's like, yes. oh, <laughs> that, that, yeah. that was a lie of the devil. <laughs> or, or, or he, he's infamous for the the. Uh, we, we've seen uh, we've seen midgets grow. Uh, he says he really, <laughs> yeah. we have seen midgets grow. Every time you give a donation, Satan gets a black eye. Have you, have, you, have, you got, have you guys seen the farting preacher video? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, I know I, Kyle I, has. But have they? No, oh. I haven't. That's oh. Robert. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's Robert, go watch the farting preacher. It is yeah. one of the, the most funniest videos of all. You know, Robert Tilton does these like these facial expressions. Oh, oh, like, oh, I, I, oh yeah. I like, dubbed in the, uh, yeah, it's great. Or, or, the, or the one guy who like strokes that metal rod in front of his congregation. Oh, and yeah. That's you've weird. seen that one? Or do you just like, he's like, and he's like, oh, it burns like fire. And he's like, yeah. and he's like, and it's, everyone's like so uncomfortable in the congregation. Yeah, yeah. There's that all kinds of, uh, there's, there's another guy that, that, that like bitches out his, uh, his congregation for a guy yawning. He's like, don't, don't yawn in my church. Oh, yeah. I've seen that one. <laughs> don't, don't yawn in my church. That's incredible. Listen, uh, don't talk to your congregation that way, okay? Y your your numbers are dwindling, and you're gonna need them. So, um, uh, the the best one though, I, I'll I'll this is the last example I'll give you. But um, <laughs> his name is his name is um, I think it's Dwight. Maybe mm. I, I don't know. I'll send you. I'll DM you the link because it's worth watching. But okay. yeah. he literally he's got this woman on stage with him, and it's his uh, his wife, and he says uh, he says my wife's a slut. God. <laughs> told me that my wife <laughs> is a slut now what's happened is this this pastor has hit dementia and nobody has the heart to tell him that he can't preach anymore this is not his wife this is his secretary up here his wife had died previously but he's calling his secretary a slut <laughs> as his wife and he goes on this 30 minute rant about my wife's a slut how would you feel if god gave you a wife and he gave you a slut <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn good, actually. I don't know. You have to send me that video. I, I, I will. have to watch it. Yeah, oh my it. god. Oh, I, I'm. I'm sorry to. I think I have, we have to wrap it up. We've been going for almost two and a half hours, but yeah, I, I, I. Oh, I've enjoyed every second of it. You guys definitely have to come back on. That's sure. great. I appreciate. Oh, this it. has been. This has been great. We'd like to have you both on uh, on our show too. That'd yeah, yeah. Next we'll time, next time we'll do a uh, uh, like a crosscast or whatever. Um, or just uh, come on your show or whatever. Yeah. Oh, this yeah, has been a ton of fun. I'll bring you on. Um, you guys, uh, uh, not every show that we do, um, like deals in sort of discussions or anything like that, but, uh, with YouTube, like with you having philosophy backgrounds, is that something you'd be interested in? Like if we got a, somebody that was maybe a younger Earth creationist or whatever, you could maybe oh, have yeah. a discussion. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think, I think Adam and I are game for anything. Sure. Maybe do a total too then. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be a ton of fun. Um, all right. Well, uh, before we close out, uh, do you want to tell all of uh, my listeners where they can't find you? <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't don't go searching for non sequitur. You'll never be the same. So save your sanity. Don't subscribe. Um, keep you know. Go about go about your daily routine without. <laughs> now, if you're a, maso a masochist and you enjoy pain and you really want to question uh, things in life, then by all means hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawn to it already. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Kyle, Steve, thanks again for uh, coming on. It's been a ton of fun. And thanks for everyone for watching and, uh, and also contributing in the live chat. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.